Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Law Explaining the Interwebs. I am your host, Nick Ricada of Ricada Law, a small law firm in central Minnesota. And with me today is a very special guest uh, from the Sword and Scale podcast, Mike Boudet. Hello, sir. How you doing, Nick? Hey, good, man. How are you? Good. I'm glad you're having me back on after I completely pussied out on you the first time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I was, I was mad for about 10 minutes. And uh, and then I got over it and it was, you know, it is what it is. Things happen. You handled and... it like a gentleman because I like I, I was telling you before we started here, I would not have been so generous to somebody who had canceled at the very last minute like I did. <laughs> well, it's probably only because I was able to get a replacement. So <laughs> at the last minute, believe it or not. Yeah, um, it was a really shitty week for me. I don't know if you know what was going on back then. I know a little bit about it. I want to get into it. But uh, what I'd like to do is... Kind of get some introductions going for the opening part because the stream tends to ramp up viewers over the first 15 minutes or so. Yeah. Um, so why don't we why don't we do some introduction, talk about you, Sword and Scale. Uh, if you have any questions about me, we can go into that stuff and then we can kind of get into the meat and potatoes of uh, of what's been going on. Uh, we can talk about some coronavirus stuff because I think you and I have a little bit of disagreement over yeah, we do uh yeah. over what's going on so that'll be interesting and um and yeah and we'll just go from there if that sounds good that sounds great um i think uh yeah i've been looking i've been looking at your streams lately i've been watching a lot of the, the uh you know the archive and going back by the way dude whoever you had on the last stream last night that guy i oh, love that guy drexel I, yeah I've, I've never heard i've never i did not know about simps and um uh, cucks as much <laughs> I, I learned so much by watching your stream it's a very educational stream i gotta say that yeah um, we try to educate all the children we can find yeah, yeah. <laughs> prepare them for the world <laughs> no uh he's he's been a friend of mine for um since god we were probably in not even in junior high yet when we met uh, we've been friends for 25 years or so and, uh, and, but have very different life path trajectories and, and he's, he's great. Uh, you can learn a lot about a world you never knew existed. I mean, you went into law, he went into acquiring pussy. So uh, <laughs> it seems like, uh, very different life paths. It's indeed. different measures of success, but I think equally valid. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I think all, you know, basically going towards the same goal. End result. He just went a, a quicker way, you know, mm. direct path. Yes, <laughs> very direct. Yeah, uh, and and a body count you could, you know, you could uh, you could run a newscast with. I'm guessing. <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah, man. So uh, so but you do. Speaking of body counts, you run or are you are you back on Sword and Scale? Yes. Yeah. No. Okay. It's my show. That's yeah. The, so there's yeah, there's this whole thing that happened about pretty much a year ago. Actually, almost exactly a year ago. Yeah. It was International Women's Day last year. Oh God. Where, a travesty of a day in general. <laughs> first of all, <laughs> yeah, I don't I I've never bought a card for that holiday. It's one of those <laughs> non Hallmark <laughs> holidays for some reason. Just the kind of holiday you just use for virtue signaling on Twitter. Right. Um yeah, so there was a, a meme that I reposted on our Instagram. And by the way, in case your audience has no fucking clue who I am, which I'm pretty sure that's the case. My name's Mike. I started a, a very popular true crime podcast called Sword and Scale in 2014. It was one of the very, very, very first true crime podcasts. I was, was going to say, you were like out ahead of it. This is before Serial? Yes, it was uh, nine months before Serial. Um Criminal was the only one that was close to us, which came out a month after we did. And then all the other ones you've heard about after that, pretty much anyone uh, is, you know, a year or two or three years after we started. So and we now were... it's a it's a massive genre. I mean, it is it is eating up podcast feeds all over the place. Everybody likes true crime. 
Yeah, and I think and lately I think iTunes is trying to suppress that a little bit. They're trying to be like, let's let some other genres in here because our our entire top two hundred is true crime. All of our uh, customers want to talk about is people getting murdered all over the place. It's weird. <laughs> well, I think luckily we have coronavirus now, so that's helping. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, no, the, you know, true crime is everybody's interested in true crime since I was. You know, in high school, I remember watching a bunch of shows that were, you know, cop shows and detective shows. And ever since I can remember, I was watching stuff like like that. And even uh, um, uh, what was the uh, there's there's so many of them. I, I'm not going to go through the list, but there was so many, you know, old school uh, docu series, um, true crime shows. Right. Forensic Files is one of the ones that obviously everybody still watches because they just put it on repeat uh, on a certain channel constantly. But um, there's a whole lot that predated that. And, and, you know, it's just always been a very popular genre. So anyway, that's who I am. I have a true crime show. It's very popular. It's been very popular since 2014. Uh, I got in a, a whole lot of trouble last year on international women's day, um, for posting a, a meme. And, yeah. What uh, was the, what was the meme? Well, <laughs> well, Nick, <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about it. <laughs> yeah. So, so, okay. So you're true. Cri- okay. Let me put you in, in my shoes for a sec. So if you're a true <laughs> crime podcast guy and you got your show and you're, you know, and, and by the way, there's all these Facebook groups for every single true crime podcast out there and all these other true crime, uh, Facebook groups that are not associated with the podcast necessarily, but just the whole, you know, just fan groups or people yeah, who just, follow. Yeah. Yeah. And they love to post memes. They love to post uh, I guess you would say, look, I'm a, I'm a boomer, but I guess this is a term they use. Dank memes. Is that a, is that a, I, I'm a fellow boomer, but I would say yes. Uh, <laughs> oh. I think, I think the dankier the meme is the better. If, I still I have no it. fucking idea what that means. But <laughs> um, my point is they would post these memes that were, you know, somewhat inappropriate, a little comical, a little dark, you know, dark comedy stuff. Uh, and not necessarily directed at any individual or anything like that for the most part, because, you know, that that can get a little, you know, shitty. And, and, and we, yeah. like our show is very different than a lot of the other shows out there. There's a lot of shows out there that they, they do comedy, they they drink beers and they talk about murder and their favorite ones and all that. We don't do that. We actually take things very seriously. We walk the audience through the story with uh, clips from 911 tapes and interrogation audio and just make it very um, personal and very immersive we don't make jokes and or anything like that so but when you're when you have an instagram account what the fuck do you do with it i mean there's a, you can yeah. post you could post oh here here's the show we just put it up and maybe a, a picture of uh some of the perpetrators and stuff like that but then beyond that what do you do with it how do you use your show your your instagram to market your show a- and obviously memes are you know something that everybody's into in 2019, right. 2020. So we would post occasionally some funny, dank memes. We posted uh, one about Sesame Street, where I think Ernie and Bert are talking about the uh, the children they have in their basement. Um, <laughs> and you're uh, laughing. Gee, Bert, we got, um, uh, <laughs> we got a couple uh, fresh ones down there. Look, uh, look, this is no laughing matter, Nick. Uh, you can't every, laugh at this kind of stuff. My entire life is a laughing matter. That was <laughs> that was a quest I started years ago. Uh it's like everything if if it isn't funny, I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. And, and and you have to have some sort of sense of comedy in in the, especially during dark times, especially now, Jesus Christ. And um and be able to take things a little a little lighter. I mean, it's not, as long as it's not directly uh, you know, intentionally trying to hurt someone specifically, it's just a fucking meme, you know? Yep. Uh, if somebody wants to take offense to a general meme about some general thing because they're so offended, they're choosing to do that. It's not you doing that to them. They're choosing to take that and make it personal to them. And it's not necessarily all about you. Uh, so anyway. Yeah, it's like that. Uh, we had a yeah. song from what, the 70s about that? Right, like you're yeah. so vain. I <laughs> bet you think so this vain. this yeah. meme is about you. <laughs> yeah, I think Trent Reznor covered that. <laughs> mm. Did he really? No, yeah, he did. It's, oh um, my god, that's weird. That's I like, uh, I'm finding that immediately. 
that, that it's so true though, but we live in a society that is so vain. It's so about, it's all about me. And, and that's because of social media these days. I think Twitter is specifically, especially Twitter is all about either narcissism or voyeurism. Either right. everybody wants to hear what I say, or I want to sneak in and see what everybody else is saying. You know, I and actually, I wrote a paper about Twitter, not for any reason, but because I'm just a stupid nerd. Uh, I wrote a, a Facebook essay about Twitter a while ago, Twitter and, and just the way we do, like we've switched from interpersonal communication to this yeah. point broadcast communication where I will just throw my shit out to the world and if people like it, they like it. And if they don't, they don't. And it's a weird way that we've decided to communicate ideas to each no, other. No, it's, it's literally designed to be a bullying platform. It's what it is. Because instead of, let's say someone d says something that you disagree with that you don't, uh, like, for example, this coronavirus thing, you said something online uh, mm -hmm. on Twitter, and I disagreed with it. And I... In order to participate in the Twitter, fuck, I hate this fucking word, Twitter sphere. <laughs> Twitter sphere. sphere. <laughs> every fucking, every CNN and MSNBC and Fox, the Twitter sphere. Stop fucking using that word, you. F okay, sorry. No, no, don't apologize. You can, but, you are permitted to get mad on this show as much as you need to. It just, <laughs> Twitter, I mean, that just drives me nuts. It drives me just as nuts as the My Pillow commercial theme song. Um, but if you're going to participate in that conversation on Twitter, I have to go onto your whatever you just posted on your page, whatever on your on on your Twitter, and I have to respond to it uh, and disagree with you in front of a bunch of other people, right? Right. And if you don't do it with the appropriate level of snark, you lose. That's the weird thing. No, here's the here. And yes, I agree. But here's the other weird thing, right? So let's say I have 30,000 followers and you have 10,000. Yeah, well, you're lucky, buddy. That's only because my other account got <laughs> nuked into oblivion. I'm not saying that's <laughs> literally the case, but I mean, you know, whatever. You can look it up. But uh, my point is, let's say that's the case, right? Yeah. Now I'm bullying you at a three to one ratio, right? Exactly. And not just that, if I then take the extra step to really make a point and I, and I take your, your tweet and I retweet it with my comment, cause I'm now retweeting it on my. Oh yeah. Timeline. You're, you're sending my comment to your fans yes. just so they can kick my ass. Yes. Now I'm really bullying you. Now it's like, that's so mean. He's such a bully. But it's literally the platform that you're participating in, and you're the one that said something initially. I right? I get that. Uh, I get both sides of that because um, while I used to have a platform approaching thirty thousand followers before I made one too many fat jokes, humble brag. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I still get it though, because because the people who come on and and want to pick a fight with me or whatever, which I I actually don't want to pick a fight with anybody. I want to like yeah. say a joke or thing and then move on. I don't really care. Uh, and, and it's not really about, it's not about getting people to brigade someone at all. It's literally just this person said thing, something that I think was either so interesting or so stupid that I just want the people who follow me uh, and follow my brand, which is just, oh God, make me vomit by saying that. But uh, who follow me and my brand that I think they would be interested in this thing and what I have to say about it. And that's literally the end of my thought. There's, I never once think, man, I hope someone goes and tells that guy he's an asshole. I yeah. just told him he's an asshole. I don't yeah, need anybody but, else. But here's the thing though. Like, yeah, you're not mentally ill. Like a lot of other people in the world, especially the ones that participate <laughs> on Twitter a lot. Um, you know, there, there's, there's definitely sort of like a, there's something very captivating to this place where you can get other people to hop on board, whatever ridiculous nonsense you're saying, as long as you have enough of them on your side and, and bully someone who's saying something you don't like or disagree with. Um, that's, that's, it's an open invitation to, to, uh, 
to to that sort of illness. Also, I I do want to finish what I was going to say in terms yeah, of yeah. what the the actual meme was that <laughs> that we started talking <laughs> about here. That we we sort of went off the rails. So a year ago on Instagram, because I was posting these dank memes, um, one of the memes I posted was um, something that I just I think I somebody sent it to me on Facebook or I ran across it. I don't know what it was, but it was related to, you know, a lot of the stuff we talk about is dismember and dismemberment and murder and, 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 and dark shit. Um, and also I've been bullied, I've been bullied a lot on Twitter by this sort of mob of SJW nonsense. Like, no, yeah, a little bit, a little bit, <laughs> but, uh, but I, you know, I it's sort of uh, sort of in response to that a little bit. Not really, not really in response to anyone in particular. It wasn't a specific uh, call out to anyone or anything like that. But I reposted the meme on Instagram, and the the meme was literally uh, a black box with white text on it. That was all it was, and the white text said, um, uh, "I wish I I uh, I wish I could understand dumb uh, I wish I could understand dumb cunts." <laughs> maybe one day I'll, maybe one day I'll take one apart and see how they work or something like that. <laughs> I, I might not have gotten that exactly verbatim. It doesn't matter. You you can't drop a C bomb on Twitter, man. They or are on Instagram or anything. They they will come after you. That is they by they do you mean who do you mean specifically? <laughs> there is that's the problem. There is no specific. If it was specific, you could fight it. But right? if you identify with that, aren't you just calling yourself that? I mean, just just think about that for you know. yes. It's it's amazing. Uh, I I got. Uh, do you do you partake in alcohol, Mike? Oh, of course I do. I love the paint thinner, just like uh, Mr. Mediker. Are you are you drinking it all tonight? Of course I am. What do you got? What do you got? What else are we doing? It's a fucking global quarantine. I what don't know. I do all day. All I know is Minnesota locks down tomorrow at midnight, and uh, with the full like shelter in place order and liquor stores, they're still open. So even our chump, commie governor, realizes the importance of the liquor. So. That's funny because I think LA County last week they tried to shut down gun stores, <laughs> but they still had dispensaries open as an essential business. Yes, which yes. I, you know, yeah, the I've end heard of the world. I don't know what's more important. Hey, Canada's the same way. Up in uh, I, I heard reports from Ontario that even though they're shut down, full lockdown, the weed dispensaries are open. Uh, but in Canada, they will just drive the weed to wherever you are. It's amazing. Uh, I just found out that you can get alcohol delivered in Texas. I had no idea. You can get alcohol uh, delivered? Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, I got to move back to Texas. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great state. <laughs> so what are you drinking tonight? <laughs> uh, I am drinking a local favorite, Tito's Vodka. Oh, yeah. Uh, Best vodka. Nice, nice. Goes well with everything. Uh, just having a having a good, good time here during the quarantine. Just trying to forget all of the... Uh, of the anxiety and bullshit. Now, are are you a panic guy? Because I'm not a panic guy. Like I don't. Uh, this this whole thing's going on, and that's probably what informs my or not informs influences my position a little bit. Is yeah. I'm like I don't think this is that big of a deal. Uh, so I I try not to ever panic. Um, like my pants could be on fire, and I'd be like, hold on, I gotta unbutton these things. Um, yeah, no, but I, look, it's not, I, I don't, I guess it's your definition of panicking. I don't think, uh, I'm a panic guy at all, but I've been following this since like early to mid January. Well, I'm not saying you can't come to a rational decision that disagrees with mine. I'm just saying yeah. that, that I think that plays into for me personally, my position. Uh, I didn't, I didn't mean to make it sound like if you disagree with me, you must be panicking or anything no, like that. No, And, okay. and I'm not going to take offense to anything you say, by the way, it's just so you know, but well, now I'm going to try a good, good. <laughs> make it a challenge then. Um, February 1st or 2nd is the day that I said, uh, this is going to be fucking bad. And I started to buy shit. Sure. I started, to, I started to stock up. Um, and so, you know, I got, I started to get stuff and then I started, and then I like, like food, 
I, I started to get like dry, freeze dried food and stuff like that. And then I realized a day or two later, maybe I'm being, I'm being stupid. And then a day or two after that, I was like, maybe I don't have enough. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know? Uh, and then I, and then as I went through my list of stuff, it, cause it took, it was like a process. I realized, uh, what I was not, what I didn't have and that I needed certain things. Um, I think the first, the first realization was I need bullets and water. Right. Right. And, and then I thought, okay, I need food, like in case I can't go outside. And then I started to think of other things. And then we eventually trickled down to the toilet paper. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I, uh, I was, I was about to go into, I need to stock up mode mainly because the writing was on the wall. They're going to start shutting things down. When did you, when did you get into that mode? Not long ago. Uh, probably. And what was it? Do you remember what it was that made you think that's what I got? It was, do? it was LA shutting down. Okay. Uh, it was those first American shutdowns where they're like, Nope, everything's going to close and you're going to be, you're going to not be able to do stuff uh, at all. So it would have been earlier this month. Um, and I was like, okay, what do we need? And then I remembered, I, I'm a, I'm an impulsive cooker. So what I do is when I'm going to cook something, I go to the store, I buy the stuff, and then I come home and cook it. Uh, But because of that, a while back, I had bought a quarter beef. So I have a quarter beef in a freezer in my house already that I just never cook because I'm I don't think I had enough to thought. Is that is that like a is that like a quarter of a cow? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's like a couple hundred pounds of cow or whatever. Jesus. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, we, you know, we, we live out in farm country and so we knew, uh, we knew a farmer who was butchering a cow. And so we bought a fourth of it. Yeah. And I went, I I went stupider. I went stupider than that. (laughs) Well, this was, this was just happenstance. I mean, I did this like seven months ago. Yeah. Uh, and, and so then it's like, okay, I have a bunch of beef already. And then I had actually gotten into a mild argument with my wife not too long ago because we do that Amazon order thing where you get uh, consumables. And if you order five different consumable products from Amazon, you get like a 20% discount on all of them. Right. And, like if, you re, if it just comes every three months or something. Yeah, it comes for us. It's every month and, and it's like diapers because we always have kids and uh, and toilet paper is one of them yeah. uh paper plates and plastic cups cuz i hate doing dishes so we have a stockpile of toilet paper already just built in cuz i was like we need to probably slow this down cuz we're not using that much toilet paper well thank god we didn't uh so then i'm like okay i don't need much of anything i mean the rest of the stuff to pick up is like oh we pick up ramen noodles or some cookies here and there that just cuz we like that stuff but well, we had the staples already taken care of. I'll tell you what it is about the toilet paper. I mean, I know it's it's a big point of, you know, mockery and all that. Yeah. But I get it. It's like, it's not like you're not going to use it. Right. You're going to get around to using it. And it's not going to go bad. You know, you could buy like a, a bunch of, you could buy a couple dozen eggs and they're, you know, or, or milk and it's going to go bad. But toilet paper, you could just stick in an attic or whatever. And you're going to eventually go through it. You're never going to stop shitting, right? Right. So, exactly. I, I kind of get it. And the look, I went super stupid. Where, yeah. Uh, talk about your endeavor here. <laughs> yeah. You want to hear? Because I was watching these videos. And and so, look, I, I, I follow, you know, I know you know Mr. Medicare. I follow Mr. Medicare. Mm-hmm. He's been reporting on this stuff since like the very, very beginning. Oh, yeah. He's way out in front of it way out in front of it. And he's posting videos like directly from China of bodies on the street, you know, being, you know, picked up by the the cops and like people just falling dead and people being put in like little quarantine cages and, and shipped off to quarantine camps and, and all that shit. And I was watching that back in like January, early February. And I was like, this is fucked. We're fucked. And, <laughs> And I was, and I was thinking the whole time, this is not going to, this is not going to be contained. This is not, this is eventually going to, uh, get, and it was like Chinese new year's coming up and all this stuff. Um, and so 
as as time progressed, I kept buying more and more shit to the point where I had a fucking guy come out and install uh, a like a an outlet on the on on my uh, circuit breaker. Yeah. So that I could, and then I bought like this industrial fucking generator, <laughs> and I have I have like. I have like tons of gasoline and 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 uh, propane, like more than I could ever possibly fucking use for any reason. But yeah. if if the power goes out, even for like five seconds, like the whole house can get repowered, you know, with with the shit I have. Um, and so and I was and I was buying like industrial water filters and like life straws. And I even got like industrial gas masks that I ordered like two months ago but they haven't gotten here yet because they so you look not, yeah, you look like a like a cold war air raid bunker in your house it's stupid i i went <laughs> stupid but i and i don't think anybody should need to go that far but i'll tell you what this is a very like look i've been i've been reading about this now for two months this is a lot more serious than people are are thinking it is um the the death rate now in Italy is literally over 10%. Yeah. Uh, and that's Italy. They have a, an older population, but so does Florida, you know, and Florida hasn't even done anything. People are going, driving around Florida. Like there's, you know, they could, you know, whatever, who cares? Mm -hmm. People, the, the governor of Florida is a complete imbecile. They haven't shut down uh, a lot of the places down there. They actually just had two cruise ships with a bunch of Corona people dock at uh, the port in Miami. Um, and they're, and they're now at Jackson Memorial. Uh, I guess they think they have enough beds for everybody. Once everybody starts getting sick, they're nuts. It's going to it's going to get bad down there. And my mom lives in Miami. I'm fucking scared to death of what's going to happen in, in South Florida. See, and I hope that you're wrong just so I can retweet you and make fun of you on Twitter. Like that's the only reason I would love for that. To be. <laughs> no, I, I fucking welcome that. I do. Um, I hope I hope you're right. I really do. I hope I'm completely wrong and I'm going to be proven an idiot in a, in a couple months. I, I actually uh, I want to I want to be clear. Like, I don't know how bad the virus is going to get, but I take a similar approach to Dick Masterson with a little bit of a twist. But it's it's just I'm not sure shutting down the economy is the right move. And the one thing I am 100 percent sure of is that there there has been no process for what they've done and i think a lot of what they're doing and i'm i'm not alone in this uh is is really unconstitutional and that kind of scares me because no one cares and uh i think the implications of those questions are something that outlasts coronavirus and that's what bothers me about it is not that uh not whether or not we're right or wrong on corona like uh, if i'm if i'm right and it's not that bad great if i'm wrong and it's not and it's really bad that sucks mainly just because people are going to die but um at the end of the day what we're doing now with just everybody embracing the government throwing out uh centuries of jurisprudence is terrifying to me uh from a legal perspective i understand a hundred percent where you're coming from. And, and I did watch that, uh, Medecker and, and Masterson debate on, uh, the kill stream and, um, you know, good. I understand the points and, and the, everything, everybody made very good points. Um, very civil, very reasonable conversation. Um, and I get that the fact that there's this fear, especially on the right, where if you give up any uh, civil liberties whatsoever, you never get them back. Right. Um, but there, I, this is a unprecedented moment in history. There's something that's happening now, which there's no playbook for. There's no how to go through a global pandemic for dummies book on. And I'm willing to, for now, cede some of those civil liberties to eradicate this thing for a limited amount of time. And it's not like, here's the, here's, here's what, the way I look at it. Let's say that you do give up those civil liberties for a few months and this thing gets eradicated and we go back to business. Or let's say we don't uh, give up those civil liberties. 
and then what? Like, what is the what is the thing that you are actually threatening to do? What sort of power do you think you have to do something that everyone in the world is saying, no, we, we can't do that right now because we don't want grandma to die? And, and what sort yeah. of like power do you think that you have to, to do that? Because I don't think that, I mean, it's an interesting discussion. It's a, it's sort of like a, a high, high brow, high level discussion, but in reality, you don't have that power anyway, you know? So just let's not, let's not get the crazies all riled up. So they go shoot up a fucking Costco, like <laughs> some guy tried to do last week. And, and let's just all settle down and just watch Netflix for a couple months and then just get back to business afterwards. I mean, if things do, if you're right, and let's say you're right. And, and the government does try to take advantage of this catastrophe to take more power from its, uh, from, from, from its citizens, then whatever you were going to do now, you could do in like a couple months, you know, we could rise up, rise up. And yeah, like three months. well, you I'm not I'm a. I'm not a boogaloo boy or anything like that. I'm, <laughs> I'm not a, and I'm not a protester, right? Like you will, it would take. You're not burning your bra over there. Oh, <laughs> listen, I burn bras all day. No, uh, <laughs> you, it would take a monumental occasion for me to actually go to, I've been to one political rally in my life and I wanted nothing more than someone to mass shoot me at it. Right. Wow. Like it was terrible. I don't care. I don't. Uh, I don't like the in-person rah-rah that gets created. It's not my style. Other people it's can like group, it. It's this group think fucking tribalism. It's all yeah. it is. They love to be in tribes. A lot of people do. So, so, uh, yeah. so you won't find me out in the streets, like waving a gun around, shooting into the air, yelling a lot. Never mind. Just kidding. Uh, you won't find any of that uh, <laughs> going on. But, um, wow. The, <laughs> listen, you think you've got spicy memes. Uh, we can, we can make, what about happen. in a black folk church in Charleston? <laughs> <laughs> now, now, <laughs> you know, my guest, <laughs> he's, he's still upstairs. Uh, no, um, I, uh, I, I'm not that kind of guy. Um, so there, I wish we were having this discussion uh, steps removed from the actual crisis but as a mild counterpoint when the whole world says take guns away uh we do have a bunch of redneck honkies out there yeah. saying no you don't right well, and especially in texas where exactly and so i think i think we we at the, it's weird we have this paradoxical country where we simultaneously have no power and a whole lot of it uh, the trick is how we activate it. And if we activate it like morons or if we activate it uh, through the right civil processes. And as much as I hate the NRA, I really don't like them, mainly because uh, guns don't kill people. Video games do is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Uh, but as mu especially if your position is this inanimate thing doesn't kill people, but this inanimate thing does. That's just yeah. a weird, contradictory position. Yeah. Um, yeah. As much as I hate them, they have created an organization, they've raised a bunch of support, and they have stepped out in, on this rather unpopular position. Because as much as everybody likes their guns, they all like their friends not to be murdered, too. Yeah. And they said, wait a minute, your friend probably isn't going to get murdered, and certainly not by a responsible gun owner. Uh, and they did it. And they've continued to do it. How long they'll last, we'll never know. But I wish we were having that discussion about global pandemics and protecting rights and setting up processes. But of course, the nature of a, of a pandemic is that you don't get to predict it. You don't get to have these discussions uh, five years ago, right? We have to have them now in the media. I think everybody, everybody right now is like... We thought 2020 was going to be a good year. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> we should have known not enough celebrities died in January for everybody to say 2020 was the worst year ever. So now oh. we get coronavirus. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, this is I look, I I understand. I understand both arguments. I really do. I just don't want my mom to die. Honestly, from a selfish yeah. perspective. Look, don't kill my fucking mom. You know, I, I don't uh, want my parents and, and, to die. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I'm. I, I'll, I'll let you get to that in a minute. I was just going to say, like the the very essence of the freedoms we have in this country 
are the basis of them is that you can do, you should be able to do, and this is how, what I believe, because I think I essentially like my belief system is more libertarian than anything. You should be able to do whatever the hell you want to do as long as you're not infringing on anyone, else, uh, anyone else's uh, uh, rights. And this virus has thrown the biggest fucking monkey wrench into that whole idea <laughs> that you can possibly throw. Because just by stepping outside, you're infringing on someone's rights now because you're, you're, you're a fucking carrier for this thing that can kill people. And again, the, the kill rate, the death rate, I know a lot of, there's a lot of misinformation out there and a lot of people are still repeating the stuff from like two months ago, uh, the bad media, uh, the, that was going around. Uh, there's so much that they've lied to us about the, the, the death rate. Oh, it's just like the flu. Uh, then, no, then they uh, revise it. No, it's 2%. It's not that bad. And then, uh, uh, no, it's 3%, 3.4%. And now we're seeing it's 10% in Italy. And now we're seeing articles from the UK saying that they're not even reporting the death rate unless the family approves of them reporting the death rate. And so it's highly underreported. And in the U.S., there's other articles saying that we have no idea who the fuck is dying because the CDC can't test the, the, the tissue of dead people fast enough to report on who actually died from the virus and who died from natural causes. So the numbers we have are completely fucking bullshit. And it's probably a lot higher to 10 or even 20%. I think when we, when all is said and done, that's how bad it is. There was a report coming out of China about cell phone uh, accounts, 23 million cell phone, cell phone accounts that suddenly went dark in February. And in China, you need a cell phone to do everything. Right. It's like your social security number. You need it to like, uh, you know, welfare stuff and like to do just, just about anything. You absolutely need a cell phone. And so for 23 million cell phones to just disappear uh, is shocking and scary as fuck. Now, I don't know how many of those people left the country as soon as they got word of what was going on. I think a lot of people in China fled in February um, and probably moved elsewhere and are, you know, who knows? Maybe that's why Italy and Europe is fucked right now. But um, something happened there. Those people didn't just... Disa you know, disappear. They, they went, something happened to the 23 million Chinese people. Counterpoint. Uh, Counterpoint. Yeah, it was actually just DSP. And what he did was he bought 23 million burner cell phones so he could gift himself <laughs> stuff on mobile <laughs> games. That's what happened. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, I, I want my parents to live too. And then I go no, on my, don't. I go on their Facebook and they're like, out at bars and they're like hanging out and going to things. I'm like, mom, dad, <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, you guys are going to die before me. Get inside. Well, old uh, people are very stubborn. So yeah. that's, that's the thing too. <laughs> hey, uh, I, I do. So part of this show is we do have uh, audience participation by super chats and let's do it. And I have, yeah, a, I, yeah my policy is read $20 plus ones right away. And, uh, and, and so we're going to do those and then we'll save there's the rest a, of the end. in there. I think I, there um, is, there yeah. is. I think you might uh, know from who <laughs> <laughs> RC EQDW says, uh, if a girl invites you to her private discord server, asks you to join her D and D club and then heart reacts to all your memes. Is that a good sign asking for a friend? That sounds like a wife material right there. I don't know mm -hmm. about you. Uh, what do you think? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah I, do you I'm... play D and D Mike? Uh, I've, I've always been intrigued, but no, I've never, I, I, I've never had time to figure it out now. Yeah, it, it is. It does take, that's the one thing it takes a, just a fortune worth of time, but it is fun. I've actually started to get, by the way, just to cut in real quick, I've started oh, yeah, yeah. board games because, you know, Oh, what are you playing? I got all these. So I got intrigued by this other podcast called heavy cardboard that does like, um, reviews of board games that but the really complicated ones and yeah the 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 high level ones like you got to be a board game enthusiast to get into it oh yeah so yeah. um there's all these like twilight struck i don't even know what they're called there's so like many, twilight imperium twilight imperium yeah 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 and and so 
I've I've bought them and now I'm super intimidated to figure out how they work. <laughs> so uh, do you have uh the the one my wife and I bought because her cousin and her cousin's husband got this thing from Kickstarter and then we bought it. It's Cthulhu Death May Die. Oh and shit. I love Lovecraft. Uh and and this is this has like little miniature figurines that are really super detailed and like major Cthulhu mythos characters. And you, you like sign up as some uh, character and you have like role playing stuff. It's great. It's a good game. I think I need to get into it. This is the time to get in really deep into nerd shit, I think. And that's, that's what I'm, that's my goal. I well, think. good. I'm, I'm actually, this is weird plug. And I didn't pay you for this, but I started a second channel that's just dedicated to like nerd crap. And I'm about to start uploading videos about it. Cause, nice. uh, and, and so if you ever want to like do a board game review with me, just let me know. Okay. Uh, that would be fun. Just um, give me like three years to figure out how to play one of these. <laughs> you don't even have to, we don't even have to pretend to know how. <laughs> uh, okay. This is from sword and scale. It says, oh. ask Boudet what hair products he uses because he's hot. Oh, wow. Oh, thank oh. you so much. That's very That's nice. Very generous. It must, must be a very interesting uh interesting person there that uh that's asking that question oh i i use l'oreal you know l'oreal oh. yeah because i'm worth it <laughs> now uh did you did you ever read uh, do you read uh malcolm gladwell books at all uh i've heard the name i'm not uh, no i don't i don't know he's kind of this scrawny canadian um, but I, I like his, his books are interesting. They're very thought provoking. And one he did, I think it's in what the dog saw or it's in outliers, one of those two, but it's the huh. story of the woman who created hair dye or who popularized dyeing hair in America. Um, hmm. and it was, uh, she worked for L'Oreal. Really? And she's the one who came up with the slogan, blondes have more fun. Uh, that whole I thing. So is there a slogan that blue haireds don't have any fun at all? <laughs> yes, because there is. In my experience, that's true. Uh, blue haireds are 30 pounds heavier than they are. That's what it is. Um, You're going to get your channel knocked again. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, so the, it was a complete fabrication, though. So because before that campaign, uh, that ad campaign, having bleach blonde hair meant you were a whore. Like right. literally that's that it was for prostitutes and strippers. And then uh, she she gets this letter. This lady who's a marketing director or whatever for L'Oreal gets this letter and then publishes the letter. And then L'Oreal creates the hair dye industry basically overnight uh, and, and makes this huge amount of money. And then at her retirement party, uh, she reads the letter off and she says, and it's just as true today as when I wrote it. Why so it's. Why do I think I've seen this in a documentary somewhere? It's probably been there before, but I learned about it from Gladwell's book and a uh, fascinating story, but it's great because someone just lied and created a whole market out of it. I love that. Oh, that's happened so many times. Yeah. That, that, yeah, that whole, it, it, yeah, marketing is, marketing is bullshit, guys. I mean, come on. <laughs> it's all marketing. Uh, <clears throat> Gelt Walker says, Nick, raise a glass for Lone Star Trent's grandma who died this morning. Can we get prayers in chat, please? Uh, I will raise a glass. I'm drinking this really weak, uh, weak as in taste wise, Wayne Gretzky 99 proof whiskey from Canada. It is an utter disappointment. Uh, Sorry to hear that. It's like, uh, it is that phone call you get when your daughter tells you she's been really enjoying her career as a stripper. That's this whiskey. So, um, why would you need a phone call for that? Well, what, <laughs> I guess she might Facebook message you now or whatever. <laughs> Send a text. I mean, Jesus Christ. Yeah. But uh, this is the Lone Star Trent's grandmother. Mm. Sorry, buddy. Bad Vibe says it, it isn't just about my government, it's also about. Everybody's Everybody's making fun of me because I did, said don't want grandpa to die or whatever. It's much <laughs> in the chat. Get, you uh, can fuck yourselves. <laughs> we have we have like a I think my chat is somewhere around it's pretty split even split on the corona issue, actually. Um yeah. I've been kind of surprised and and thankfully the people who disagree with me have the grace to just say I'm an idiot and move on. Uh but it it is a you know, I don't think anybody knows what to do. 
And that's what scares me is because I don't think the government knows what to do either. No, the government's a bumbling bunch of morons right now. Like our governor did his, uh, we, we did the lockdown order in Minnesota. I knew it was coming this week. I thought it would be a day or two earlier, but I knew it was coming when he said, we're watching California and loving the success they're having. So we're going to lock down our state the same way. We're just not ready yet. It's like, oh God, thanks. Uh, okay. You're, I'm glad you're making this thoughtfully and not just because Florida governor did it. Uh, but it, it's unbelievable. We, we had a, um, there's a, a Houston rodeo that they have every year here. It's a huge event. There's thousands and thousands of people. It's the biggest thing in the city every year. Oh, the Houston rodeo is amazing. Yeah. Well, I went to it as a little kid. We knew that Corona was here. We knew it. And we knew yeah. that it was killing people. It was pretty obvious at that point. They went ahead. They, 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 they actually suppressed the information that there was people in Houston with coronavirus for a few days to try to, <laughs> you know, mitigate. Look, and you can't delay the... the rodeo, though. What are you going to do? You can't cancel that. That's the most it... important thing on the planet. Well, they did after three days, but they still went ahead with it. And then after that, we found out that a bunch of people got uh, transmitted uh, the coronavirus at the rodeo. Uh, so nice. It's just so stupid. And then, like, I think a week later was Mardi Gras, just a few hours east of here. Is the rodeo uh, and, still by, it's by where the Astrodome and the Astroworld were, right? I've actually, you know what? I've actually not been yet. Um, okay. And don't actually plan to ever go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so it's, it's like, it's like bigger than the Texas State Fair. It's stupid yeah. how huge the, the Houston rodeo is. I haven't been there. I mean, I think I went as a little kid. Uh, I would have been sub 10 years old. Mm. But I used to go to Astroworld and, and, uh. And the Astrodome a lot. Um, okay, so let, finishing Bad Vibes chat says, it isn't just about my government. It's also about economic harm for individuals. Domestic violence and suicide is going to be an issue. What do you think about that? As people are like locked in the house with their spouses, uh, as people are in panic modes and in, in fear, do you think we're going to see a spike in that type of stuff? Domestic violence and suicide and well, as job I... losses mount? So I, I reposted a, an article from uh, just actually not to not uh, just a few hours ago from um, what is it? Nature, Nature magazine. Sure. Where there they actually went back and looked at all the times where not just in this country, but in other countries where there was like a, a economic recession, depression, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, including the Great Depression. And there was actually a lull in deaths including suicide weird um it, yeah it is it is weird because it's what and you I, hear about with like the 20s the late 20s great depression is that you know everybody's just jumping out of windows left and right yeah and i'm not going to say that this is factual in any way you know or yeah right or the correlation makes sense exactly because i don't think we have a big enough sample size anyway but my point is um i don't think it's that simple i think that there are you know, during things like this, I think people just focus on the thing specifically. Mm -hmm. And there are deaths. I mean, there's, I think there's already been a few suicides in the news that get super highlighted. And, you know, a lot of attention is focused on them. But who's to say they want to kill themselves anyway? Um, because See, of whatever was going on in their lives at, at that point. I wouldn't kill myself unless I watched the news, but they would be unrelated to coronavirus. Like, I just. <laughs> I just can't yeah. stand the news media anymore. It's um, horrible. It's yeah. fucking trash. It's like, it, it's real bad. I only watch these days. I only watch for the, the, um, the, the Trump press conferences, because I think that there's always a chance there's going to be some reporter that says something that pisses off Trump and he's going to just snap at them. And it's <laughs> be hilarious to watch just for that moment. You're getting but, COVID uh, tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but uh <laughs> that was great that was actually pretty good um but um but yeah no it's it's garbage most of the time all it is is trying to fill a 24 7 uh you know yeah. just stream of of consciousness bullshit 
uh, based on whatever ideology the network's at, and they'll just have a bunch of so-called experts come on and give their opinion and call it fucking news. And the populace is so goddamn stupid that they think that that's actually news. They don't realize you're getting fed opinions 23 out of the 24 hours of programming every day. Oh, man. Uh, just a couple years ago, I was visiting my grandparents before uh, before my grandpa died. And then my grandma just passed away. Uh, it was it was probably a year ago. Uh, and and they were in Houston and uh, all, you know, have been just salt of the earth my entire life. Right. My my grandpa did like insurance sales and also was a handyman. Uh, and he could fix anything. And uh, that was that was what he did. And uh, my grandmother like taught me to cook. She actually taught my mom to cook as well. Uh, she was just a good Polish lady. Uh, well, actually, I think she was Dutch, but my grandpa was Polish. So she cooked Polish food. Long story short, uh, they're just great salt of the earth people, happy, uh, good Catholics or whatever. And then in the final years of their life, they had CNN on every TV in the house. Uh, all day even oh, while no. they slept and when uh you know when my when what years with what, what years is this is probably this is what year did they start watching it like religiously it would have been probably 2010 i want to say i think my grandpa died in 2014 2015 i'm so bad with dates yeah and especially with death i'm just like it's uh, I don't, I don't like go to funerals or anything. It's, I don't, I'm like, that's just a body in there. Uh, that, so I just, it, not my thing. Uh, I was I just going to say, because I think that after, uh, nine 11 is when the networks, the, the cable networks yeah. really started to bank it because, you know, tragedy is yes. their business. They were so afraid of life like we didn't have a coronavirus that was that put them in a in a high risk group we didn't yeah. have anything they they were afraid of like i don't know people being drafted to go to a war and i'm like you guys aren't gonna get drafted i'm not gonna get drafted we're all aged out of this thing like everybody you know is unaffected by what you're talking about and they and i'm like and we're not even really in a war and we're certainly not having that many people die that they're going to institute a draft like we're we're nowhere near uh vietnam levels of of casualties in the afghan or the iraq conflicts uh what what are you guys talking about and we would have all these arguments over oil and these are texas people it's like what are you, you're it's arguing it's almost like watching an old white guy talk about abortion. It's like, who are you fucking? <laughs> <laughs> but it was just, it was just wild. I'm like, why are you so scared? And then it started to hit me as I'm sitting in their house and literally nothing is on but CNN. You, you guys used to watch soap operas. Do that again. Anything other yeah. than what you're doing because- Price is right. Good wholesome yes, entertainment. Exactly. Watch Jeopardy. Oh shit, that guy has- My grandma cool. used to record Wheel of Fortune and fireworks displays. Like Jesus, go back to that. Anything- Wow. Other, you guys have, it's past your time. Now you're just here to live your life, enjoy your grandkids and your great grandkids and just let it go. But they were so terrified and I hate that because they were scared at the end of their lives about- yeah about everything and it all came from this poison well that is media mass I blame media. it on i blame it on pbs i mean pbs used to have quality programming late at night when i was a kid you could watch monty python and betty yes. hill yes you, you could watch <laughs> really really fucking off-color jokes uh, fish slapping uh dead parrots and then uh, <laughs> tits, an old man chasing a bunch of young tits around the screen with the with the Benny Hill music. That's what you could watch on PBS when I was a kid. And now it's just all Gwen despair. Eiffel. Or did she die? Did Gwen uh, Eiffel die? I don't know who Gwen Eiffel is. Who's Gwen Eiffel? She was the is it Eiffel? Gwen Eiffel? Yeah, she was the PBS journalist. Oh yeah, she died in 2016. She was the uh lady that they picked to moderate a debate um back in one of the uh, obama elections and it was like okay. you picked someone who is so pro obama and anti the other guy that it was embarrassing uh i don't remember if it was romney or mccain i think it was romney i think it was 2012 but yeah 
Yeah, she was a PBS, uh, a PBS and NPR person. Just I just think that like there's just, there's a point in society where we lost any sort of um, humor, any sort of like ability to look at us with a. Uh, uh, without being serious about everything all the fucking time and offended yes. by everything all the fucking time. And you could actually say something and some people would be offended by it and they would just go about their day or change the channel. Yeah. And they wouldn't go on. They didn't have a thing that they could go on and send an angry. Li- Cause that's what it was back then. And I think even like, I think even in Monty Python days, I think they have a skit where they made fun of this, where they 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 read aloud the letters that the BBC would get about the show, and and sort of mock it, because back then that's all you could do. You could fucking sit down and write a letter and put a stamp on it and wait a week and a half and see if anybody ever responded back to you, which usually no one did, no one did. Right. But now you go on Twitter and you get the immediate uh, uh, gratification of somebody telling you to fuck off because you're a a, a fucking dweeb Um, yeah we used to mock these people and now they're given immense power by twitter exactly but you know what here's the thing though here's so i do a true crime podcast so i see all of the the worst in society i don't think it's coming from a bad place necessarily right i think that most people and a lot of these people, especially a lot of the you know SJW virtue signaling types, are the kind of people that probably got beat up and bullied in high school and, and grade school and whatever. Not enough. And probably, Sorry, that's the liquor talking. Go ahead. Probably, but my point is they <laughs> they know it. That you know they kind of got a taste of that, right? Yeah. And and now they have a they they believe they have a platform where they can stand up to bullies right that's their whole that's their whole thing the problem is they're the ones bullying now because human nature is hey we don't like that guy let's go let's go bully that guy and and let's get a bunch of our friends together and go bully that guy it, human nature you're still shitty you're just as shitty as the guy that you're trying to go after by doing that you know what I'm saying? It's yeah, okay. I I do. Although I will say I'm not so mad about the people who do the bullying on social media. What I'm more mad is that anybody on earth pays attention to them. Like that's the weird thing. Because right, like okay, well, so they we, we they all were... want to. Yeah, sorry. Oh no, that's that's fine. They were they were sending letters to the BBC about Monty Python, and then they're just like okay. Who cares? You're just some weirdo who saw something you didn't like. Yeah. What happened to that attitude? Like, where'd that go? I want to just, that's what I want. Every time someone on Twitter goes, oh, it's time to talk about Mike Boudet. Like, well, you're just some weirdo who saw something you didn't like. Fuck off. We all want to feel important. We all want to like be the ones that, that are like the moral high ground kind of, you know, I'm going to stand up and I'm going to do something uh, better than everyone else. And you kind of want the recognition is really what it is. You really kind of want to get the recognition to be like, Oh, look at this guy. He's really standing up to that guy. It's really such a, what a, wow. What a Chad. Look at this guy. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. and so <laughs> it's know, usually the exact opposite. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> but my point is that's the ideal. That's the, the idea in these people's head that they're going to be this sort of like, I'm going to one up in, in terms of virtue signaling. What, you know, even if someone, even on my own team says something, I'm just going to come in and virtue signal at them because I'm morally superior to them. And I'm going to let them know that I am and everyone else here on Twitter, because that's how we converse. Now I talk to him and you all get to listen to me and agree with me and then bully him. That's how it works. So, um, let me read a couple more of these chats. And then I have a question about your, your situation in, in, January or in uh, last year, as much as you will, will talk about it. Uh, oh, yeah. Anonymous says late and very, very cringe poster delayed until after Coronas lupus. Did you show Drex Ram ranch? The moment yesterday had me crying tears, man. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know if he went and looked it up on his own. I'll make him listen to it tomorrow. 
Um, oh, Christ. I might have to step away from the stream for just a minute because I think I have crazy kids. Uh, oh. Give me just a moment. I'll be right back. If... I'll entertain the folk here. Thanks, buddy. I'll, I appreciate it. I'll just it. read off some chats here while, they, uh, while you do that. Somebody, somebody named Esme says, Zubam Mafu, with a bunch of hearts. I don't know what that means, man. Um, it, it's lupus. It's never, it's never lupus? No, it's lupus. Okay, you can pretty much type anything. I'll just read it out loud. Uh, Sherkun is in the house. Sh Sherk? I don't know what you're trying to say there. Sherkun? Sherkun? Zabumafu. Zab Zabum Zabumafu. I'm just trying to... Can you guys just re write something that makes any sense what the fuck soever? I don't even know what you're saying right now. Just trying to... Trying to keep you entertained here for a few seconds while Nick goes and deals with his little uh, virus uh, transmitters. Hail Satan. Okay, I could read that one. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, here's a long one. Part of the U.S.'s problem is that the CDC has needed a major house cleaning for a decade or so. Most of its budget is not getting spent on its mission, which is pretty much pandemics that says Rio Hoshi. Um, I'll take your word for that. I don't, uh, don't have any information on that, but yeah, sounds, sounds good. I mean, I don't think the CDC has done much during this whole thing. I think that I, I actually, especially don't think that the world health organization has done anything. I think they just literally, all they did was come out and say, Hey guys, let's not call it the China virus. Cause that's like xenophobic or whatever. Let's call it COVID-19. We just came up with a new name. So please everybody start calling COVID-19. Everybody, Chinese people are nice guys. Stop it. Don't, don't hurt the Chinese. Um, and nobody was really saying otherwise. Uh, so I don't get it. Um, but yeah, no, there have been, and by the way, there have been some attacks on individuals, unfortunately. And uh, uh, just for being Chinese. But it's usually not white supremacists, as the media will have you believe. It's usually just ignorant idiots. Um, and it's not a widespread pop problem. I don't think that... Anyone hates the Chinese people. I think the Chinese government is a fucking atrocity that lies to everyone in the world and uh, including its own citizens and actually um, doesn't do them any service whatsoever. But uh, nobody hates the Chinese people, you know, at all. I don't think. I mean, for the most part, I'm not going to say nobody, but I mean, I don't. Um, the CCP is a piece of shit. Everybody knows it. Wow, I'm really just going off here. Um, okay, sorry about never that. Never live stream my own stuff. Never, <laughs> never do this. Never. This is a bad idea. <laughs> what did you What did you do while I was gone? <laughs> I just went on a rampage, and uh, I should never. I just realized I should never host my own live stream. Who'd you take ever. down in your rampage? Uh, the the Communist Chinese Party. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. Yes. I'm banned in China. I don't know if I am, but I should be. Um, okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> thank you for covering me. Sorry. We've got, got a lot of children. There's a sleepover going on with Drexel's uh, kid, and, and so there's just some mayhem out there. Um, Amelie's Human says, I live in Pinellas County, Florida, county that has clear water. We are at such a level of not giving a F even though the country shut down, public boat ramps are still open so people can go out. Good. <laughs> wow. I know the Pinellas County Sheriff came out against the governor and said that shutting things down was stupid. Because uh, uh, DeSantis shut down the beaches or something like that. All of Florida is stupid. So. The, uh, the sheriff came out and he's like, no. But see, the Pinellas County Sheriff, if I remember right, is the same guy who... Uh, who tried to make, he's like a big anti-gun guy. So I'm not a super fan of him at all. Uh, Knight of Hopex says guys, coronavirus is an act of God or nature. People are going to have to continue to get diseases and die from them. It's just how biology works. There's no government that can lock us all in homes and protect us from every danger. Just not feasible. Can I pop in for a second? You, you just can, said... you can trample all Sorry. over me. No, seriously. You're the uh, guest. 
you just said, so here's, here's something very important. Cause I just, somebody tweeted me today and yeah, it just pissed me off. Um, when, when I, during this whole coronavirus thing, my whole Twitter stream, my whole Twitter stream, by, by the way, I wanted to get off Twitter completely and, and just not look at it because it was driving me nuts. Yeah. But then coronavirus happened and I've been just like <laughs> tweeting about coronavirus constantly since uh, it started get, to get really bad. And, um, you know, obviously expressing my point of view. And whenever I hear some governor or some mayor or some whatever say something that I think is fucking stupid. I just call it out and I talk about it that way. I don't go and look at, oh, is this guy a, a Republican or a Democrat? Right. And then some fuck some fucking person was like, oh, I thought you were a supporter of blah blah blah. And I was like, <laughs> bitch, I don't I don't subscribe to like tribalism and nonsense. Like I, I have my opinions about stuff, and if it goes against whatever some fucking side of some aisle thinks, then who gives a shit? Like, yeah, you know. Well, do you think I'm starting? I'm sorry. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sounding angry, but it pisses me off. Like every so freaking tribal about stuff. It's just, just develop your own opinion about something and, and like think about it and don't like you know be on some tribe. Just have a, have another Tito's and get a little angrier. Yeah, we'll, I'm gonna get. We'll cozy up. That's fine. Anger yeah. is anger is encouraged here. We are yeah. not. We are not some cuck Jedi order. <laughs> we, we are one hundred percent Sith. Um, uh, the uh, the chat is telling me that you mispronounced Cherkun while I was gone. Is is that true? How I do you answer? What are we talking about? My chair, my which is my co-host, is the uh, is called Cherkun. Oh. I, I don't know. Did you? The chat always uh, talks to Chair Coon while I'm gone. If I ever have a kid thing. So I don't know if they if that happened while I was. Well, while I, I do. Found. I apologize to the. They kept saying that. I didn't. I didn't know. Oh I, yeah. I was some sort of leader in Indonesia. I didn't no. know. <laughs> <laughs> no, just in central Minnesota. It's the uh, the backup host in case I have to go ah, hang out with the kids. I see. Um, Sigurd Helixson Cryptkeeper says, "F your grandma." My grandparents were already taken from me. Why should I sacrifice my rights for your grandparents? If we give up our rights, we are done as a country. And why does YouTube not let me curse on Super Chats? Because, because, uh, what's her face? Uh, Susan, Susan just doesn't like the cursing because she's kind of a bitch. Uh, my in a nice way. Dead too, by the way. But, uh, what was but that? I, I, my grandma's dead too, but that guy can go fuck himself. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, in, but that is, that's the nature of, of these things. And that's what makes it so complicated. Right. Uh, in, in the, at the end of the day, it's people are, even if they're not panicked, they're scared or they're concerned or like, yeah. uh, it's, it's me. Um, suddenly this thing threatens me. Suddenly this thing threatens my, my parents, my grandparents, uh, if it's a different type of virus that threatens babies or whatever it is, it, something comes to us and it makes us question uh, what we've what we've stood up for. Like as a libertarian, I'm sure you're conflicted about this. Absolutely. Like, and this thing does doesn't just threaten old people. It threatens all of us. I don't I don't think we have all the information. I think if you believe that we do, you're just buying into the bullshit They're They're lying. They've been lying to us for months remember when they were telling us that masks don't work what kind of a fucking idiot is going to believe that masks don't work oh by <laughs> the way we can't operate hospitals because we don't have enough masks but masks don't work so yeah. don't buy masks they can't get their narratives right what the f who what kind of a fucking moron believes shit like that and they've been lying to us from the about the numbers from the very beginning if you really think this is not going to affect you Okay, you could go out and play Russian roulette with your life, but if you're going out and spreading it around, you're playing Russian roulette with a lot of other people's lives. I just don't agree with that. Mithrin Emrys says, though, quote, those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. I get it. Benjamin yeah. Franklin. I've heard uh, it. Precautions are fine. It is that governmental overreach that concerns me. Me too. Me too. I want the process in place for taking our rights away. 
And the luxury we have is, is this is a true luxury, by the way, is that we haven't dealt with anything in this way before. I won't say of this sort because we have had viral epidemics, but we've never dealt with it in this way. And we've never been in such a period of mass transit, of mass communicability. And I, I have to, as I analyze these things and develop my position, I have to recognize the unique state of history that we're in, right? Never before mm -hmm. do I want to go to Wuhan, China. I just literally drop like $1,500 and get on a plane. I mean, uh, before this, obviously not now, but like I can go anywhere in the world at the drop of a hat for a relatively mm -hmm. low cost. And, uh, and that's, that's a unique place in history. And so when we look back at other major epidemics, we look back at the bubonic plague or Spanish flu, even probably the most recent real, real murderous disease that we've had with Spanish flu. Um, we don't have analogs for it because even though Spanish flu is in the semi-modern era, mm -hmm. you weren't hopping on a plane and going to Uganda, yeah, right? No. No, uh, no, not not in any in any capacity like it is now in any way, right? So it's uh, that's one thing I wrestle with is uh, do our modern concerns uh, go over our rights? And I feel like my job is to be that one asshole who says no, they don't. Hmm. But that's, that's and you know what. I'm there's a place for that. And I absolutely agree with your right to do that. I I'm just, just sorry that it's me and not someone better at it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I just, I just, uh, I don't, I, I lost my train of thought. Just go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. no, no worries. <laughs> Big, Big Red Bear says what Corona is going to do is exaggerate the political differences people have too. People at the bottom get scraps and an incompetent response. Trillions going to the top. It's going to radicalize tons of people. WCGW. Yeah, what do you think about um, the the sort of stimulus bill, which I think you Garbage. and I agree. It's fucking that shit. We agree, though, that if the government is going to shut things down, they've got to do something, right? Absolutely. Like, if you're going to take people out of work, you got to pay them. Well, the number one issue, right? The number yeah. one issue is if I uh, let's look at the very bottom tier, the very bottom, the people that are working paycheck to paycheck in the service industry, bartenders and uh, whatever, yeah, waitresses, whatever. They're they're literally depending on those tips and that check to pay their rent and buy their food and pay their electric bill, right? Uh, and whatever other utilities they have. Now. Let's say that we say, okay, well, you know what? You can't evict these people. You can't evict these people at all, no matter what. We're going to send them a $1,000 check like they just did, which yeah. is garbage, by the way. Um, and uh, What should and they have done? But here's what happens. And there's a guy that's worked his whole life to buy an apartment building as an investment property. Yep. And now his mortgage is going to go uh, go under, he's going to get foreclosed on because he can't pay the mortgage because he's depending on the check from rent. Well, you think $1,200 isn't going to pay the mortgage on a $7 million building? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so glad that the, uh, the, you know, the, the, uh, public broadcasting got 75 million. I think Pelosi wanted 300 million for the national public broadcasting yeah. system. So you could hear, NPR talk about what a shit Trump is constantly. Did she get uh, that? Uh, did she get that seven million to her the school where she's a board member? I I there was so much fucking pork in that bill that I don't look. I, there was literally like twelve things that I went through, and by the end I was so exhausted that I stopped reading it. Someone sent it to me. It was eight hundred and eighty pages. I'm like, I'm reading. It was more pages than the initial Republican bill. I got bored reading the table of contents. Yeah, it was it was absolutely insane. There was so much the Kennedy Center. There's like, yeah, uh, it was absolutely. And, and this is when people are freaked the fuck out that they don't know how they're going to pay for their bills in a week. And, you know, they're delaying it. They're on vacation. Then they're they oh they need an extra day to read it. To make sure there's no oh there's a procedural uh, issue. It's got to go back to the house. Yeah. 
what the fuck is we should just knock everyone out of there we it's should okay. just they, them all go they said they're gonna get checks out to people by may <laughs> oh, oh great just two months just two right. months of this without any pay for a lot of people. Here's the fucked up part, right? So again, that guy that has the apartment building or, or the a couple of apartments, yeah, that that has worked his whole life to 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 get to that point. So he's got a couple of investment properties, and he thinks he's doing okay, and he's maybe kind of older and ready to retire soon, and he's he's all set because you know he's he's worked all his life and he's built up his little nest egg, and now he's got these, and now this happens, mm -hmm. and there's no rent. And by the way, there's no evictions because in order to evict someone in most states, you need to go to court and you need to get a, a court order and then you need to get the sheriff to go out there and evict them. Yep. That's not and happening. All that shit's shut down. Everything's shut down. And uh, some people are mentioning that mortgages are shut down. Now, I know residential oh, no, mortgages no, no, no. are. Not sort of. of. Yeah, sort of. The that's my that's my point. So mortgages. So bank. I think Bank of America said ninety days for for residential mortgages, but not every bank is shutting down their mortgage <laughs> demands. No, just and, four of the five big ones. Yeah, and that is. I mean, there are a lot of local banks that do mortgages that aren't shutting them down. One of the five biggest lenders in the U.S. isn't shutting down right now. And and here's the interesting thing: your interest is still going up. Yeah, like you're still you're still if you're a new purchaser, uh, you are still uh, accumulating a large amount of interest, and those payments are just suspended. They're not going away. They're going to get right. tacked on to the end of your bill. Um, and and a thousand if you. If you bought a mortgage, if you bought a house on a mortgage this year on a 30 year fixed and you take a month's payment and you tack it on. So 1200 bucks or whatever you tack it on to the end of your bill, you're paying $14,000 or something like that by the end of that 30 years for that, for that $1,500 right. uh, being suspended. It's, it's a massive, massive amount of money and, uh, and it's not happening for everyone. And so we're talking about commercial mortgages, though, because we're talking about the guy who bought an apartment complex. Yeah. Yeah. So so here's my point. Like Cheesecake Factory, I think, came out this last week and said, uh, yeah, we're not going to pay rent. Uh, we, <laughs> we, we, we can't pay rent. We're not going to do it. A victim. We're, oh, oh, and by the way, we're Cheesecake Factory, bitch. So what are you going to do? And And I was like, good for them. Good for them. And also, we should all do that. Everyone. Because you know what, the the thing is, the banks got a fucking hell of a bailout not too long ago. Yep. And they they kind of owe us a little something, don't they? Don't you think? Maybe a little bit. Um, I think that at some point, you know, you got to pay it forward a little bit, and you'd not any. I think there should be a moratorium on any evictions that that could take place because of the coronavirus during this time span. And yeah, there should and I, be some sort of like freeze on that because otherwise these banks are getting away with murder because they're the ones that are benefiting, benefiting yet again off of another fucking travesty tragedy that nobody could have prevented. Well, well the first one they could have, but you know, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Well, <laughs> we're splitting hairs. Uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> we disagree on that too. <laughs> no, 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 we don't. We don't. They okay, could have right. the, the 2008 crisis could have been prevented. There were people who saw it. There were people who made a bunch of money by seeing it when no one would listen. Yeah. Uh, big short is a great movie. Oh, that I is, love that movie. Yeah. And, and, uh, it is, it is fictional, but it's also very truthful. And, uh, there are a lot of people who saw that coming. Just no one wanted to listen. Because they were all making money and doing cocaine off of hookers or whatever. Yeah. Uh, Just like we were last year when we were talking about toxic masculinity and the patriarchy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so uh, Super Iron Bob says, quote, marketing is BS. Quoting the guy buying the fear marketing 2020. Oh, that's at you, I think. <laughs> fear market? I don't think I, I have nothing to benefit by fear marketing, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, okay. Great. Felipe M says fifth time in this country, we've had a respiratory virus, H1N1, SARS, MERS, Zika, and now COVID-19. 
let the government do whatever it wants for a time. Look at Venezuela. Really doesn't work. His mom is going to die anyway. Oh, man, I hope not. Wow, that's she, mean. That's she is mean. past her due date anyway. That is, that is, that's I just, hope your mean, mom sir. survives personally. That's mean, sir. Is that a sir or ma'am? That's a sir, Felipe. Okay, sir. That's very mean. Uh, Bald Eagle 1787 says, it pisses me off when people try to compare what happened in China and Europe to what's going on in the US. China doesn't care about losses. Europe messed around and now their systems are overwhelmed. They reap what they sow. Very, very brutal. Oh, uh, very angry people in your super chats. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Tucker says, this is your... I said anger was encouraged here. Yeah. Uh, Tucker says, this is your reminder that California Governor Newsom is a massive beta who probably hasn't slept with his wife since the third date. She's inviting all kinds of Tyrones into the governor's mansion to get laid. May the gods save California. I like that one. That one's fun. Uh, wow. Two more, and then I want to talk about... Uh, I want to talk a little bit more about last year. And then yeah. about the announcement, because we have an exclusive announcement, right? Yeah. Okay, I do so, want to say one thing before uh, about the Super yeah. Chats before you, uh, before you end, but go of ahead. Of course. No, go ahead. Uh, no, I was just going to say, I, I, as, a, as someone in that's uh, been a, a victim of virtue signaling, um, I, don't, I don't agree with it. I, I think that you need to, like, fucking, did you watch that? Did you see that tweet from Madonna in her fucking tub? I uh, saw, I didn't read it. I saw Madonna was in a tub and I was like, Madonna, she's like my parents age. I don't want to see her in a tub. This is a, this is to that asshole that just said that I was profiting off of. Well, he didn't say you were, he didn't say you were profiting. He said you were buying it, but, like okay. buying into it, buying into the marketing. Yeah. And also selling the marketing. I think he's insinuating. Uh, here's, here's what I want to do. Um, whatever your, your, your super chat uh, donations are uh, today. Yeah, on this stream, I'd like to match that to whatever charity you decide to benefit anyone, uh, anyone you want uh, regarding this uh, tragedy. So that's what I'll do. I'll I'll do that because I I think virtue signaling uh, motherfuckers are are, are just uh, weak pieces of uh, trash and uh, pony up and uh, write a check, bitch. And uh, and that's that's what I have to say about that. Uh, yeah, your your angry fans are making me angry. So now I sound <laughs> angry. I didn't want to be angry. I'm just gonna, you got to be I'm angry. Gonna go, I'm gonna go zen now, brother. So all right. <laughs> so okay. So you're saying you'll match? Uh, yeah, I'll match what and, and whatever whatever chair you decide the charity. I'll send you. I'll send a receipt. You could post it. You could tweet about it. Um, and I'll just match whatever they do in the chat in the super chat. Um. I'll match it and, and send it to whatever you want. Well, Gauntlet Throne guys, give me ideas on charities. Uh, I'm 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 prone to Make a Wish. Uh, I like Make a Wish a lot. I think they do some really good work. But but I'm I'm open to ideas. I'm open to ideas. Um, so thank you for that offer. That's a that's a great offer. James B says, "Fact and yes, bro. Fact tribalism and let people look at individual issues and make their own decisions based on how they view that issue." Without the lens of which aisle does this come from? I agree 100% with the guest. Hey, so you got a friendly. That's Thank good. Thank you. That's nice. Uh, Blaine 20 says the government is a crafty child. If you teach it that it can win you over during an emergency, it will invent emergencies. Hegli uh, Hegelian dialectic. Dialectic. These Jesus. super chats are very poetic sounding. Look, I got smart fans. That's they all put I got a lot of say. thought into them. Uh, okay, so let's talk about last year because you were, you were absolutely the victim of cancel culture uh, for for a period of time. Now, if I'm not mistaken, you mentioned you own Sword and Scale, yeah. But because of this tweet, you had to step back for a little bit, right? Like to just yeah. to let things blow over. Well, so what happened was, so we were part of the Wondery Network, uh, which is one of the top. Um, top 10 networks for podcasts um, because of us, honestly, because when they started, um, I think it was 2015, they reached out to us and we were already very, very big. Uh, they wanted uh, us to sign up and we, we, we came to an arrangement, um, made a lot of money together. And before this whole thing blew up, we had signed a five-year deal with them, including um, stock and all that. So we actually own, own part of Wondery still. Um, but they, uh, got very scared 
when a few people started tweeting at them angrily because they were offended by these this reposted Instagram uh, meme that I that I told you about. Right. You know, that dreaded C word. Oh, you can't say cunt. No. No, Jesus, you're going to get banned. Even dude. though the, the Brits and the Aussies say cunt all the time. You don't know how many tweets and uh, PMs and stuff I got from Aussies and Brits. <laughs> like so many. Just saying, uh, I call my mom a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, that's just <laughs> the way it is. And um, But yeah, so, you know, they got freaked out. And, and then they went after our advertisers. So we got publicly dropped from Wondery. And then oh they tweeted God. about it. And that's when it got even worse because then they publicly said they have nothing to do with us anymore. And then it really went downhill. And so some fucking hack actor, B-list actor came after us and did a couple of YouTube videos about us. And, uh, and, and just the whole, look, this whole fucking SJW thing, um, they just keep coming after me because I am outspoken. I don't put up with their bullshit. I don't just go, oh, okay, I'll try to be better. I'll try to do what you say. I'll try to say what you want me to. Yeah. You know, I didn't get into the business of podcasting so I could speak through someone else's voice. Right. And, and just shut up and do what I'm told. Um, that's not why I started this. And so, uh, so I get in trouble. Let's, let's put it that way. That's I, a, I get myself in trouble. Can lot. I interrupt you for just a second? Yeah. For that's sure. the crazy shit, right? Like you worked with, the, this isn't a casual relationship, right? This isn't you and Google. This is you guys and a company You've grown together. You've yeah. worked together. They know you. They know your show, your brand. And then some. this is the weirdest part of this cancel stuff for me is some random asshole on the internet sends them an email. The lowest effort Karening you can possibly muster <laughs> is a damn email. And suddenly they're like, oh, my God, I've never even met Mike Boudet before. I don't yeah. know how this guy works. We got to cancel everything. What the hell is that? I think it's pretty obvious that the internet is full of, of you know, oh God, I was about to use the R word. I was about to use the R word. We say exceptional individuals. Very exceptional. And there's a lot of people out there that will just read something or hear something uh, or or see something tweeted by someone that they follow that they, oh, they're just the best. I just love that guy. And then they'll, they'll, they'll Karen the the fuck out of whoever it is because um because they just you know they're just passing along the information it's that it's the, it's a modern version of telephone yeah you know and yep. and that's i know we're going to get into it in a minute but that whole uh lawsuit thing we were talking about that's based on that because literally it's it's you know it starts off as a public thread where there's some interactions going on and I say something in public to the whole thread and they're like, Oh my God, look at what he's doing. He's, he's asking her for nudie pics. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> you think I would do that on a public thread? You fucking moron. Like, what do you, what do you think? So what do you think is happening here? That's how they took the cunt post was that you were asking for. Nudes? No, no, no. The oh, cunt okay. post is just the finale. It's, oh, the, okay. it's the it's the sort of like oh now we got him now we got him he said the c word we got him now let's get him yeah the very origin of it was like offending a bunch of fans from the my favorite murder group on the my favorite murder facebook group um my favorite murder is a, another true crime podcast with two very sjw uh middle aged ladies oh, that no. are very woke and no. uh and um and that's where it all started where the whole he asks for nudie pics and that's the whole thing everything everything leading up to this point in terms of um oh my god he's such an asshole oh, he's so, look at him he's so fucking toxic masculinity oh, that Jesus. all comes from that one place which was uh four years ago 
four years ago. Oh my god. Yeah. So did you so did you ask someone for nudes? Yeah, I asked the whole no. <laughs> Cause I, I I'm asking everybody for nudes all the time. Just the guy the guy insulted me in the chat. I asked his mom for nudes. Um, <laughs> the uh here's the in an in essence just to break it down real simple here's what happened 2014 no 2015 i want to say late 2015 is when this happened yeah maybe late 2016 i don't know long time ago, enough time um i got a, a text from a, another podcast friend a female podcaster who is really in touch with everyone just very much in the in the community and she's like there's a bunch of people talking about you in the my favorite murder facebook group sure and i was like oh okay really and she's mm -hmm. like yeah oh they're just going they're going crazy they just you know, they loved it i was like okay so i popped in there and got accepted right away and they're um the the term fangirling uh they were fangirling about sword and scale and my yeah. show and my voice and whatever. And, um, and I popped in and I said, hello. And, uh, and then I, uh, started interacting in that thread with other people in that group. And there was almost an immediate, um, uh, uh, just, <laughs> I don't know how to put it. <laughs> I don't know how to put it. Yeah. Um, the uh, one late one one of the people in that group said i love his voice so much i'd love to sit on his throat while he talks <laughs> hot i'd do it so in that context <laughs> and that was just one of many along the same lines of this sort of you know post i'd only on do group. it if you drop down to your <laughs> well you know i i could get very barry white on your motherfucking ass um but my point is wow this is getting sexy i didn't know the Riki Riki Rikita stream listen it's my shirt's already like... off no i'm just uh. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but i will be sending nudes this is just personal stash yeah uh, video recorded yeah uh so <sighs> I started, res I responded as, look, nobody gives you a fucking handbook on how to be pseudo famous when no. you start podcasting. Oh. And, and do I wish I could take, holy shit, do I wish I could take it back? But I interacted with these fans in the same way that I am interacting with you now as a human being, uh, you know, just being natural and myself and, and just be trying to be funny and, and and personable and all that and so if someone would say something overly flirtatious i would respond with something in the same realm of that anyway what happened yeah, was the mods of this group the mods of this group who are, who i think all have blue hair um and it's a disease and, and describe their pronouns in their twitter bios oh god damn it got very offended by the way i was interacting with the fan base and they started to warn me, and I started to say, why the fuck, what, 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 I'm not talking to you, why are you? And I very quickly got banned from the group. <laughs> um, Everybody loves this guy, he joins, banned. Good banned. business practice. Banned, and then, and, then the, and then that whole thread got immediately taken down, but a bunch of people in that group that were offended took screenshots that they still post to this day, of my responses out of context within the thread and go, look, he, he asks for nudes of his fans. Oh. And then within that same thread, they're going, they're going, they're saying things like, um, uh, we have, we have members of this group that, that may be underage. And this is what he's saying in front of, this is what he's, he's requesting nudes from under. And so it just, again, the game of telephone. Now, now I'm requesting nudes from underage girls because I re because I, because I basically responded to someone saying something to me in a public thread on a murder podcast group that wow. may or may not have underage uh, people in it. 
That's that's fantastic. It's it's absolutely amazing. The real question I have for you though is did you get any nudes? Uh. <sighs> <laughs> And how depressing were they? <laughs> no comment. Okay. Okay. No, no, I, I, I will tell you, that's not what that was. That's not what that, that was me interacting with those people was just fucking joking around. Of course. Of course. I have gotten nudes, but I've gotten nudes <laughs> that were completely not requested. So, um, that's actually a form of rape. <laughs> yeah, you got you got eye raped by the news. I got eye raped by some people, uh, especially if it was a penis with googly eyes on it. That's terrible. Yeah. yeah. Um. Okay, I got a couple more chats, and then let's do the let's do the announcement if that's okay with you. Mm -hmm. Phoenix Lord Asterman says, "Sounds like a generous offer." I applaud you, sir. Thank you. Paul Godin says, "I this is a hundred dollar super chat." Says, "I recommend a veteran charity." So that's going to get some extra consideration. I see more more uh, donations coming in the super chat. That's great. Yeah, let's do it. Let's keep it up. Bald Eagle seventeen eighty seven says you threw down a gauntlet. You may regret, sir. Also, my last chat may have sounded awful and brutal, but it's a hard reality. There's a finite amount of resources, and you can't save everyone. Triage is a horrible reality. Okay, I, I kind of agree. With, yeah, I understand that. Yeah. Fallout BOS 34 says, Mike, I have a serial killer you can talk about. Cecil Henry Floyd. He is rumored to kill 11 plus people in the 70s around parts of the U.S. and kidnapped my father for a time in the 70s until he got away. Thanks. I'm not a wedding DJ. I don't take requests. But um... <laughs> Who is your no. favorite? Who's your favorite serial killer to talk about, though? I by the way, no, I was just ki I was kidding, dude. Everybody <laughs> takes such offense to that. I, I say that all the time, but everybody's so offended by that. Who's my favorite killer? Yeah, like the one you like to talk about the most. For me, it's Henry Lee Lucas, uh, for example. Uh, I think uh, the, the, so. Th I don't have a favorite killer because I think they're despicable. But I think the one guy that stands out most is the one we talk about um, uh, a lot on. Whenever anyone talks about uh, their favorite episode of Sword and Scale, um, episode 20 comes up a lot. Um, okay. Episode 20 comes up a lot. Uh, and also, um, uh, I'm, stalling I'm trying to look up I'm trying to look up the name of the guy. Ronald William Brown. Ronald, Ronald William Brown. Why do they always have three names? Because he's from Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Like every Henry Lee Lucas, John Wayne Gacy, yeah. Ronald, uh, Ronald Lee Brown or whatever. Jesus. Yeah, Ronald William Brown is, was William. a ventriloquist puppeteer on a television program for children called Joy Junction on a variety show on the Christian Television Network Jesus. in the 80s, I want to say. And his chat log uh, from a YouTube chat with another pedophile is something that will fuck you up for the rest of your life. Um, uh, do you know the comedian Chris D'Elia? No. Okay. Well, he's 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 really popular. He's got a, uh, like three Netflix specials, and he's a very funny dude. He did an episode of his podcast about my podcast about this guy because we take the chat logs and we have like um, a computer voice read them. And they're talking about how to kill, cut up, dismember, uh, and cook and eat children. Damn. Uh, and it, it's they're talking about the thigh meat. They're talking about the the way that you want to prepare them, uh, the oven size and the garnish, and <laughs> you know like. Whew. And so, yeah, that's one that uh, that stays with you. That stays yeah. with you. So if you want to go back and and hear some vintage shit? Uh, episode twenty of Sword and Scale is that it? What about the most famous mass killer in the United States, Abraham Lincoln? Wow! <laughs> wow! Up in Minnesota, uh, he presided over the largest mass execution in United States history uh, when he hung a bunch of Native Americans. For the Sioux Uprising. 
So just so I know you don't take requests, but that's an interesting show suggestion, right? I I'm I, I'm flabbergasted. I'm going to uh, have to read up on that. That's, no one ever uh, thinks of presidents as killers, but that was a especially that one. The one right, that's celebrated yeah. as uh, you know. <laughs> wow. Okay. It's a it's a weird one. It's a weird one. He's you know for all of the good Abraham Lincoln did, there's some shady shit in there too. Well, I think Daniel Day Lewis did a wonderful job. That's all I gotta say. Yeah. Uh, the Big Red Bear says, "How many trillions can the government spend? The real economy, the one where people work and build stuff, is being hollowed out. Like the subject from yesterday, i.e., the USSR. How long will citizens be able to tolerate it? Uh, I think I think we both agree that we hope that the, it's as short as possible, right? Like, hey, we got this fucking thing called the Federal Reserve. <laughs> Unlike Bitcoin, you can just make as much money as you want. So uh, that has repercussions, though, throughout history. Of course it does. Of so. course it does. But uh, but for now, yeah, <laughs> you know, <It's, laughs> yeah. Well, that's why I hope it's short, right? Because it's two trillion now. But is it is it four it's trillion? More. It's going to be much more. It's going to yeah. Nick. It's going to be much more than that. There's no way that this is it. Well, let's talk about the uh, the big announcement. How do we want to do this? Um, I don't know. Okay, so guys, let me let me preface this this way. Uh, we are not going to go into specific details tonight about the announcement in consideration of our guest. Um, I don't I don't want to jeopardize or put him in any sort of interesting uh, quandaries, so to mm. speak. But uh, there's a lawsuit that's going on. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. We're we're, and it's an already filed lawsuit. So this yeah. is not not coming. This is here. It it was filed last year. Yeah. Um, it's and just nobody knows about this. Nobody knows about it. We have we haven't talked about it. It's working its way through. Um, the problem here's here's the the base, and maybe we can talk about this because you are. I think I I kind of understand your point of view your philosophy, your, your, um, politics to some degree. Um, and I'd like to get your opinion on this because if you sue someone for just talking shit about you on the internet, you're just a big old pussy, right? Exactly. 100%. Right? But there comes a point where if someone is, is saying something that could literally threaten your livelihood your your business, the livelihoods of all of your employees, because it's so slanderous and so ridiculous that if anyone were to buy into it, and we talked about this earlier in terms of there's a lot of idiots out there that just buy into whatever they see or read. Or well, if it's on Twitter, that, who would lie on the internet? Ever? Who would lie? Yeah. So at some point you got to go, that's fucking enough. That's enough. And put your foot down and and take things, take matters into your own hands. And that doesn't mean, you know, going out and buying more bullets. It means, you know, going through the legal system in the United States and letting it play out. And that's that's what's literally happening right now with what has happened to me. It's gotten to the point where the game of telephone has gotten so extreme where the repetition of bullshit has gotten so extreme that everyone adds a little something to it to make it a little spicier, make it their own, that they've come to the point of basically calling me a pedophile. And that's the line in the sand that's got to be drawn. Yeah. Well, and, and here's the interesting thing. See, uh, I don't know if you know this. Um, lawyers as a collective group are retarded. Uh, We'll, we'll drop the R word here. You, you don't say. Only when it's true. <laughs> Only when it's true. And and they are. So you'll find lawyers who analyze everything as if it's 1975 still. Even though that's before most of them went to law school, that's where, that's where judges are. That's where a lot of lawyers are. And so they go, they go, well, you know, someone, someone calling you a pedophile online, that's just... Well, that's just them insulting you. And it's like, well, sometimes, but at other times they're actually saying, no, this guy did this thing that is that I'm saying happened and that makes him a pedophile. And they're not just doing it to say, uh, I don't like Mike 
right? They're doing it to destroy Mike. And there's a very big difference there. And we... Well, the line, I think, comes when there's a bunch of people that could be like, this is what this guy did. That's what I... And, and, and whatever, even if it's just like, he did that. It's coming from like, pretty much, I read that he did that, right? Yeah, exactly. There's, there's a line when you go, he did this to me. I'm the one he did it to. Yeah, And at that point, you've just stepped into crazy town and there's no way that that is going to be, um, it's going to be let go. I, you can't, if you don't defend that, you're pretty much saying, yeah, it happened. Yeah. And that's uh that's an interesting point. So the big announcement guys, just in case that wasn't clear is uh, Mike from Sword and Scale ha is pursuing legal action against someone who has been trying to destroy uh, him, his show, uh, his livelihood, his legacy, all of it. And when you really get into what's going on with these sort of things, you come down to this point where, I mean, it is it is not just destroying someone's ability to earn income it's destroying everything they've ever done everything they've ever built and why because you're on the internet you have time and uh and you're bored i guess i don't i i legitimately don't know what would drive someone to to try and wreck a career i know i hate a lot of people right like i'm a bad christian uh i think a lot of people are just piles of garbage I would never fabricate a story about them to try and ruin them. Uh, yeah. I, I'll just make fun of them. That's it. And that's yeah. And and someone someone in the chat just said, uh, "Where's the Indiegogo?" I'm not asking for any money for this. Just so you know, I'm just sure. defending myself and and my name that I've built. Uh, you know, I've built a business. I've built a, a a pretty successful brand, and I just want people to know that I this is. This is ridiculous and you shouldn't stand up for it. And the problem is that this misinformed piece of shit that whoever it is is coming after me because I don't know who it is yet. So the idea is just to just to give you a, a real sense. It's something that was posted in Reddit. And in order to find out who it is, we have to find out. Uh, we have to subpoena that information from Reddit and we're in that process, but it's it's a process. And. Um, the point is, this is someone that's, that's on the, on the side of believe all women. And by doing something like this, they're undermining that entire ideology. They're actually lying about that because they, they, they just think I'm a bad guy and they want to go after me because I'm not, I don't, I don't believe the, whatever propaganda that they, that they want to spew and they want to put out there. And I, and I fight against it and I talk uh, against it. And so they're actually undermining their own cause and their own belief um, to, to come after me and, 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 do the, and smear me and do this nonsense. And, and it's just, it's so fucking retarded. It's, uh, it's crazy. Uh, I did it. I used you, the R word. You did it. Get off my show. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but it, it's, it's wild because that's the, yeah. that's the problem, right? Like this is what we've been talking about the whole show in, in a roundabout sort of way is that the internet has given undue power to this accusation in a way that if this were the 80s and there was just some random person out there saying uh, Mike Boudet did this, no one would care. No one would care. There, There is nothing but some magical aspect of Twitter makes enough or Reddit in the, as it were makes yeah. enough people care that it will end a career just because the accusation is so toxic, even though there are no facts attached to it. Uh, Cause I've, I read the, uh, the Reddit post in question. There are no receipts that are ever provided. Uh, there's nothing, there's nothing to back it up. It's just this lingering question of, yeah, uh, he did this thing. So uh, we're it's not going to, it's just this general idea that I'm an asshole, that I'm a toxic, toxic masculinity example. Exactly. And they want to come after me and make me into uh, this, this 
you know, they want to Harvey Weinstein me. Um, right, except the difference is you didn't have right, sex I'm with all the, Weinstein. you That's didn't have sex difference. with all the hot young women. <laughs> Well, like, let's uh, back up there. Sir. Well, okay, um, sorry. With those specific high and voluntarily <laughs> have sex with all the yeah. There's a uh, for some of them. I will say, you know what? Like, uh, I think Harvey did did some bad stuff to some people, but I think a lot of those girls knew what they were doing too. And and many I'm of them. I'm not going to go as far as you just did, but look, uh, I'm an asshole. That's my job. It, yeah, but uh, I think I think some some of the people out there. Uh, knew what they were getting into. And now that they have achieved something off of that, they have a different powers perspective. Uh, that, that All right, they... this is going way wrong. Let's, they, they <laughs> built Cosby me. Is that better? They yeah, there we go. Cosby there me. we go. They <laughs> caught, you got a hot Cosby. <laughs> I don't want to get into the argument about Harvey Weinstein. No, no, no. And Look, I, I don't, you know, uh, I, I, I'm not trying I, to defend the man. He's convicted and he's a piece of shit. You let's literally put, let's just leave did. It that. You literally just did. But no, my, no, no. Well, I didn't defend him. I condemned some of his, some of the accusers who are latching on to the actual victims. No, fuck you. I'm going to virtue signal about this. You just, oh, you just defended. Please don't Twitter ones. destroy me. Um, I'll send you nudes. <laughs> <laughs> my point. My point is, um, uh, the, the the there's this. The Me Too thing, look, it was fantastic, the Me Too movement, that it helped so many women come forward that had been struggling with um, this thing in their past that they couldn't talk about for whatever reason until that point. And that's phenomenal. And I don't want to minimize that or take that away from anyone. But it also created this other thing which a lot of people don't like to talk about um, because the Me Too movement in the way that it is, again, on Twitter, it's a fucking hashtag. And so the very idea of it is like, raise your hand and say, Me Too. Hey, Me Too. Hey, guys, I want to join too. Me Too, this happened to me. I was walking by a construction site and some construction guys whistled at me and it made me feel uncomfortable. Me Too. Yeah, I don't oh. even believe it made them feel uncomfortable. Look, if right. I walk by a construction site and a bunch of construction guys whistle at me, uh, no homo, I'm I'm feeling comfortable, feeling good. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you actually change your route to walk through the construction site? <laughs> I live in the I live in the country. There isn't a construction site. It's it's you just go, you drive for miles just to find a construction site to walk. Through. I I drive around and I wait for the guy with the stop sign who switches to slow and I'm like, "Hey, what what up, girl? How you doing? Where My name is shorts? Bob." <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit. Uh, <laughs> oh god, I can't get that picture out of my head now. <laughs> oh, this is awful. Cat call me. Cat call me uh all day. <laughs> no, it's uh no, it it is. It is this thing. We we we've taken the opportunity for women who are actual victims who for whatever reason. And there are there are several valid reasons that women have felt uh uncomfortable and it may be it may be interpersonal or personal. It could be societal reasons that they felt uncomfortable coming forward with yeah. a real story of victimization. That's that's a thing that has happened uh, in the past, and we we get this opportunity to allow people to come forward and to expose actual pieces of shit, and we expend it on catcalling. We expend it on. Speaking of which, by the way, do you believe this shit? What about Biden? This just came out. Somebody <laughs> in the chat just mentioned that. Do you believe all women? Because if you do, you got to believe uh, Biden was touching some pussy. I'm sorry. I, I believe all women, but Biden's victims aren't women yet. Oh. <laughs> wow. That went dark real fast. Look, he's sniffing the hair of every kindergartner he can find, and that's up to him. That's a that's a weird dude. But no, I uh, yeah, I heard... I heard he got me too. Like a, a well, today. <laughs> today. What an what an unlucky asshole. Maybe Bernie will come in and sweep to victory. Oh god. What do you I think it's know. a Bernie Broette who did it? 
What are the odds? It's got to be. It, well, it's got to be. It's got to be. I don't. I don't buy it. To be honest with you, even even though I, you know, I'm not a big fan, but uh, Bernie, Bernie is the literally the devil. I, I'm. Uh, my parents are Cuban. They came here from the. They fled the Castro regime. Yeah. So socialism is something that my heritage has been like trying to escape for the last hundred years. Yeah. They're like, please dear, dear Christ. No. Yeah. And so if Bernie, if Bernie somehow pulls out ahead of this, um, yeah, I'm moving. What do you think about, uh, my, my conspiracy theory is that Bernie takes Biden to a brokered convention and Hillary comes in and sweeps the brokered delegates without campaigning, completely inoculated from the shit slinging that's happened. And then she runs for president. Wouldn't that be fantastic? Hillary's Hillary's kind of just done with it. I think, I think Cuomo is a better option here. I think that I didn't say this would be a good or rational decision. No, I I think Cuomo has a better chance really of, of, of pulling some fucking last minute sweep right now, actually, because there's a lot of pressure on Twitter right now uh, and the general public to, because uh, his handling, I think, I think a lot of Democrats are really happy with the way he's handled the the coronavirus crisis in New York. Um, not so much the Blasio, but <laughs> yeah, I was reading an article about that today. Yeah, uh, it was um, basically like uh, the hand jobbing of Cuomo because he's not de Blasio is scary. Was what the article was saying. Yeah, I think a lot of people loved the whole little interaction with between him and uh, what what's the other Cuomo on CNN? Chris Cuomo. Yeah, where they're talking about uh, uh, call your mom. You know that nonsense. I didn't um, watch that. I I have no idea what it is. All uh, I know is I have a they're friend. Just, they're, they're being just cutesy brothers. You know, just oh, being weird. like normal normal people like you and me. You that's, know that kind of thing. That's wrong. Politicians aren't people, and neither are journalists. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I have a friend who's a Minnesota Republican congressman and he was saying that he praised Cuomo's leadership, uh, and stuff like that. And I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? (laughs) Just just, uh, because again, uh, my perspective is of course that, that we've got overreach happening and I want it to stop. I I just want some guy. my, My opposite, I have my opposite yet. I agree with you. Uh, perspective is that we didn't have enough of it. And I think that Cuomo should have stepped up like three weeks ago and shut down the whole fucking state. If he wants to, if he wants to, you know, now he's just bitching. Now he's just complaining about everything he doesn't have. When you're three in, weeks ago, uh, he could have just stepped in and, and just told everybody to go home and shut the fuck up. You're in Texas, right? Hashtag yeah. doxed. Yeah. So I like what Abbott did, frankly. I think Abbott saying, I'm not (laughs) going to take the authority and shut down the state, but if municipalities want to do so, that's up to them. Um, (sighs) I I like that approach personally. We're the 48th worst worst state in terms of, uh, you know, lockdown and social distancing. Only if you take the perspective that social distancing and locking down is correct. How else do you fight a virus? Well, if you if you take my perspective, <laughs> if you were 48th, you just skyrocketed the second best state in freedom, baby. Okay. <laughs> Everybody's dead, but we're all free. That's right. I'm licking yeah. bluebell left and right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I actually um, I can't lick your bluebell ice cream. We don't have it up here. So. Oh, that's a shame. That's a shame. I, I'm sure I'm pretty sure you could still shoot up a Walmart if you wanted to. Um <laughs> Or a Costco. Uh, I just they, I just cough on their Napa cabbage or whatever. I only cough on the Asian vegetables. Oh fuck! Let's talk about. Can we talk about that for a second? Absolutely. The, whatever the makes whole, you think. Oh fuck! Can we talk about that? I want to go there. Oh Jesus Christ! Because I got so torn up, and this was back in like uh, again. I think it was f- early February. I I'm pretty sure it was February first, where some fucking Italian. Professor Flautist tweeted. <laughs> a flautist, Peter. A flautist. A, 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 yeah. A fucking Professor Flautist tweeted um, this long rambling tweet about um I'm get, I'm gonna screw this up, but I'm just just to give you an idea. He's yeah. like, he's like, 
A Chinese woman, a ch an old Chinese woman steps on a train. Uh, a young Italian, uh, no, no, I'm sorry. A small Chinese boy steps on a train. An old Italian woman screams at him. Now you're going to get us all sick. That's a, not a very good Italian accent, by the way. But um, <laughs> now you're going to get us all sick. That's a terrible now, Italian now accent. Now you're going to get us all sick. <laughs> I don't um, think that's better. I, I, you got to make him do, sick. Uh, <laughs> uh, you got to make him sick, Mario. You uh, go. Uh, so, um, so she she says that, and then and then the boy turns around, looks at her, and says, "I've uh, I, f this, I, this is I'm going to fuck it up now." He says, "I've never even been to China. I am from Vienna." Or some some bullshit like that, and 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 the no wait here here's how here's how it's phrased. It's like and then in perfect Roman Italian, he turns around and says to the lady, "I've never even been to China. I'm Italian," <laughs> or something like that. And then and then the next line is applause and scene. He should have teleported behind her and said, Oma way Shinderu. <laughs> so wait. So yeah. So I replied to this this fucking nitwit. Uh by the way, and this had like, and this was trending, I think, at the time. And this was February 1st. And it was trending. And I said, and I re replied to this flautist PhD professor from Italy. An hour later, everyone on the train was dead. <laughs> and then the shit that I got after that. <laughs> you, no, I literally thought this was my second uh f big fuck like and it was almost like okay, I fucked up last March. Now it's February, it's almost March. Oh, it's been a year. Let me just ruin my whole career again and get everybody, you know. And so yeah. I literally thought my career was over because of the amount of piling on uh, you know, g shitty comments and everybody coming after me and just, I was like, oh, it's over. Oh, okay. I just fucked it up all over again. <laughs> so, but <laughs> look at how, look, look at, look at where we are now. Right. Yeah. Um, the, this virtue signaling piece of shit, uh, flautist PhD guy, um, I think like the next following week after that, they were doing like a, a campaign in Italy to fight xenophobia. That was like, Hey, hug a Chinese person. That's the, you know what? That is the funniest part. Like not, not saying that a bunch of people dying in Italy is funny, but the cosmic irony of hug a Chinese person with everyone. With Hug a Chinaman. Standard deviations <laughs> higher death rates than everybody else is. Let's let Ooh. these people know that we we know that their you know disease has no borders. <laughs> so let's. That's just, why we have doctors without borders. Yeah, let's embrace it. Let's let's hug them, and and let them open cough into our face. Look, uh, I will pay office. you money to cough into my mouth. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> wait, no. I will pay you money to cough into my mouth. That's how it goes. Uh, Paul Godin says, that is the reason that I support bringing back dueling. This is in regards to your lawsuit. When you have to back your words with action, people start thinking carefully the words they speak aloud. Mithrin Emrys says, good on you for standing up. However, defamation law is about 40 years out of date. I hope you can proceed and get the outcome you desire. I won't hold my breath, though. It's an uphill battle, and I wish you the best. This Thank is, you. of course, uh, and, and don't don't talk about the discussions that you've had with your attorney or anything, but I can imagine no. that uh, they have gone something along the lines of, this is going to be tough. Uh, it's, it's, an uphill, it's an uphill battle, and um, they are, but... At the same time, I think in today's this, day yeah. that that you have to, you have this was to. So this was so blatant, and you saw it. It was yeah. so blatant and obvious, and obviously defamatory. That there's no question. It's literally like uh, it's a no-brainer.
And and by the way, I'm not doing this because I have any expectation of gaining any monetary compensation for it whatsoever. No, because likely just, you find out who it is and they're deadbeat. Oh, they're they're just gonna be working Starbucks at some fuck. It doesn't matter. The point is, I can't I can't just let somebody do this to me. Uh, because somebody else is just going to do it after that. And and if I don't stand up for myself and put my foot down, then, you know, it's just an endless stream of idiots after that just trying to do the same thing. Um, so I, I have no choice. I have no choice. Exactly. Uh, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, there's... I mean, as much as Twitter is a virtue signaling nonsense, I think today, uh, if you have any sort of public recognition at all, that you have to, you have to come out and fight such severe accusations because, uh, and I get it that the jurisprudence may not, may not be where we want it to be on this stuff, but it's not going to change if we don't fight it. But the, the ability of some random person to ruin a life with a fictional story is it's too much. And we have to try and bring consequences to them as much as possible in my humble, humble opinion. And Twitter is also a, a breeding ground for this stuff too, because you can create 10 Twitter accounts and get Wondery to drop you. It literally just takes 10 accounts to get any major company to do almost just about anything you demand. Yep. Um, and that could be ruining someone's life and, yeah. and you can create these accounts in seconds and there's no, uh, there's no, uh, um, checks and balances there. There's nothing. Twitter doesn't give a crap. You can create as many accounts as you want. There's and no the, uh, and there's no repercussion, no repercussion uh, as well. Drexel, Drexel and I were talking about this, uh, today, actually, um, how his belief is that it should be literally criminal to try and destroy someone with a lie. Um, yeah. and, and there, there's, there's an argument to be made. Um, I'm not quite there cause I just don't trust the state in general. That's a little but, extreme. I think that's a more extreme than I want to go. I think you could handle it civilly, yeah. but I think that the laws in ter- and the precedents set there in, in civil court are very are tough it's restrictive and especially in libel and stuff like that it's very very hard to to prove your your case yeah and that's that's crazy i think that the courts need to start recognizing um just how damaging this is because and, and it's weird it's it's doubly damaging for guys uh in in our sphere you like you just stop it guys it, that's true <laughs> so there you okay go. let me rephrase uh, uh permission to withdraw uh i withdraw the i withdraw the statement let me rephrase um it's quadruply uh because it's doubly distressing for guys in general but it's quadruply dis- distressing for guys in the sphere that you and i sort of walk not yeah. to put myself in the same place as you but but this idea of pseudo fame please be right? more famous than i am <laughs> we're not but we're not you know we're not johnny depp right we're not uh a chris evans we're not a tom cruise excuse me did you see the fucking photo i sent you earlier i mean i'm hot come on that's, that's not even what i mean i use l'oreal <laughs> that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about on the notoriety oh, aspect okay. where um you know we don't we have some platform to discuss this, but the the whole problem is is that the people will take that platform away from us and then use the platform that we had against us. And yeah. and that's the scary thing. It's like, wait a minute. I don't have the capacity. I don't have the name recognition out there for everybody in America to go, "Wait, did Johnny Depp really do that?" And even Johnny Depp got a raw deal. Yeah, he did. And this yeah, this is one of the most famous people in America. Uh, he's coming off of a slew of super success. And again, um, the Me Too movement. It's all grouped in. Just like, hey, every fucking man in America, every hetero man, every cis male is a piece of shit. Let's go after them. Yeah. And yeah, every even even the ones that that kind of aren't. And you know, we're we all we're all flawed. We all make mistakes. 
But I've never made a really... mistake, sir. You speak for yourself. Well, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, I've seen some of your streams, so rude, uh, rude. <laughs> but you know, what let I mean? me finish like this whiskey. <laughs> we're all we're all susceptible to saying the wrong thing and pissing someone off. But my point is, that's because the we're wrong not thing. All Bill Cosby, motherfucker. Well, and that's because the wrong thing isn't wrong. We have people inventing wrong things and then using things that we've done in the past as evidence that what we did was wrong. Uh, it, it's that's that's the crazy talk, right? Like uh, that Canadian whiskey is really uh, kicking in, huh? No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. Listen, I am a professional whiskey drinker. No, the the uh, but you know what I mean. We've got we've got people coming out here today saying that this is wrong in 2020. By the way, yeah. listen to what this guy said in 2015. And in 2015, literally oh, no yeah. one cared. Jesus Christ. They were trying to pull up shit from, uh, God, somebody from the Brat Pack, I think. Um, <laughs> not too long ago. It was like, it was like a, two years ago or something like that. They were trying to pull up like Dean Martin shit. Or, well, or I don't. I you heard don't, about I, the guy, the NASCAR driver, right? Whose dad said something racist in 1985 before the NASCAR driver was born and he lost all of his sponsorships. Because I did not hear about that. That's fucking insane. It's crazy, right? Like this, this, they didn't have any evidence that this kid said anything racist. His dad said something racist before he was born. Everybody's and, dad says something racist. Yeah, exactly. Of course, because it wasn't, it, it probably wasn't racist in 1985. Uh, well, right. I, I shouldn't say that. I don't know what the guy's dad well, actually Jesus said. Christ. I mean, I could. But, if I look, if I if I called you a uh, a uh, uh, he in in uh, in 2014, that that'd be perfectly acceptable. But you right, know, I'm now, clearly a female I have now. To use your pronoun, <laughs> which by the way was actually the the main news you were going to break on this show. The fact that you're changing your pronouns. Right, the, um, my pronoun is now uh, Mistress Ricada, and you are on my <laughs> you are literally my subs, not just my YouTube subs. Uh, there you go. I am. I'm. Dominant mistress, Riketa. My point is, <laughs> yes, they keep changing the bar. The bar keeps moving and it keeps changing. Um, in my lifetime, um, when I, early in my lifetime, uh, you couldn't call someone black because it was racist. Right. And yeah. now you can't not call someone black because otherwise it's racist. Yeah, you had to say African American. And so you have to use the whatever the and it keeps changing because someone gets offended and then it changes. Someone else gets offended and it changes again. And it just keeps changing. And unless you're completely connected into that insane fucking world of ever changing uh offenses, then you're you're gonna get it wrong eventually. And then you're gonna be ostracized and kicked out of society for what for for what oh and i was i was talking about this uh years ago before i was ever speaking publicly about stuff on youtube or whatever just in facebook discussions but um not only that they've created like you you've used the expression several times in the show cis white male right <laughs> and 10 years ago I fucking hate that expression but right nobody <laughs> on the fucking earth knew what cis was 10 years I didn't know ago what that was a year ago actually to be honest with you yeah but it started cropping up and it yeah. started popping in and uh and i noticed it among some of my more liberal college friends uh, who would who would talk about it and they're like using this this cis normative shit and i had a I had a friend from college, from undergrad who transitioned into being a woman. And that's where I saw like a lot of this language develop. And I'm like, what is this? And literally it was, if you don't know our new lexicon, yeah, uh, you can't even participate in the discussion. And now they've taken it the next logical step of not only can you not participate if you don't understand what cis hetero means, uh, you are also hateful. Because you didn't take the time to understand. It's, it's my way pronouns. worse than that. It's way worse than that. It's also, 
I can change my pronouns at any time and I can just make shit up that isn't in in the in the English lexicon and make you say those things because I demand to be special. Exactly. And if you don't do that, well, you're just transphobic and hateful and Listen, if you don't know what gender fluid non-binary princess means, <sighs> oh, <laughs> you, you sir can it. get you sir or madam can get fucked. Look, I, uh, I hope that, and it seems like it has, this whole corona, the whole rona that we're going through right now. <laughs> um, I think people have just stepped back a little bit from that because none of it fucking matters. Yeah. And we're all, we're all probably going to die. So maybe that's a good thing that, that people are just stepping back and, and focusing on the things that are important instead of the bullshit nonsense to be offended about that doesn't actually hurt you you know i actually i've tweeted this a few times um i, I think i've wanted to tweet it more than i have but it's like <laughs> uh the the whole idea that the 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 real the real thing that was toxic was masculinity <laughs> or 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 you know or you know the real virus is racism you know like that kind of nonsense fucking thought process that was existed like not not too long ago just a few months ago and now it's basically absent on twitter i don't see a lot of virtue signaling on twitter anymore i see a lot of um people being scared for their fucking lives and I've maybe got... that's good because people that are very fragile and sensitive probably need to fear for their lives a little bit more and stop caring about what someone called them at the fucking starbucks i've got bad news for you though Oh, shit. It's coming back the second the shutdown is over. <laughs> and and so listen, it, these so it's, it's parallel to the stock market is what you're saying. No, it's it's going to be <laughs> this thing is going to bounce back harder than uh harder uh, than a god damn it. I don't even know how to say a thought with a boot. Uh this thing is going to bounce back tremendously because all of these Okay, well, these, I, I take back everything I said. Disavow, disavow. All of these attention whores who have spent the past five to ten years garnering uh, ass pats on Twitter, right? Over with the with the anti white cis male hetero Christian nonsense, um, they have been killing it, cleaning up the simp vote all day. Suddenly they don't matter because everybody realizes that Corona Chan's a real, like, even if you don't think the virus is a real crisis, the shutdown is a real crisis, right? There is a crisis going on, whether you think it's viral or whether you think it's economic or whether you think it's rights or whatever it is, everybody can agree that we're in some shit. The second we are not in some shit, these people are going to come back so hard because they have to. They've made their identity depend on it you've seen these people nick nick, nick. yeah not if they're dead <laughs> listen listen these denny's workers are going to live through everything because they eat grand slams for lunch they are going to make it they are I wonder, I wonder how many motherfuckers are sitting out there right now with a list of their enemies and just waiting like yeah, a month a month or two from now eh, i wonder how many will be you know knocked off the list I don't think not enough. No, not enough of them will die in Minecraft for this. It, it will. They will come back with what about a, Roblox with a <laughs> nobody dies in Roblox. Oh, OK, uh, they will come back with a fury and they will try and claw all of the attention that everybody paid to coronavirus into their pet projects. And it will be a scary, scary reckoning, I think. Uh, and I don't think that they're I don't think that they're going to get coronavirus because because I, I'm a Christian and all, but I'm not sure God is just. Uh, <laughs> well, don't, you don't say you, I don't, you don't know. You, you don't fucking say. Look, um, God, God did cripple Jesus dirty. I don't think he's going to take uh, LJ Montello to task. I'm just all saying. I could say is maybe maybe we can just maybe we run. Maybe we do a little uh, political ticket, you know, Ricada Boudet, twenty twenty four. You be the president. I don't want to do shit. I'll be vice president. <laughs> yeah, I'll just be the Mike Pence electrocutor. <laughs> Mike Pence is weird, man. Have you been watching him in the press conferences? He looks no. like an animatronic character from Disney. Oh God, that's great. 
he I, looks like he's trying to mimic he's just bush, charging his batteries bush, bush jr like uh like he's tr his mannerisms are like junior but without the fucking personality so it's just the the behavior it's weird dude have I, you seen it no i haven't i don't watch oh, god damn it i don't watch anything man i i don't i can't I can't. I I'm pissed <laughs> off. I'm pissed off enough not watching anything, right? Like if I watched things, I would be going nuclear and I okay, can't. Okay, now I'm just every day from now on till this is over, <laughs> I'm just going to send you Pence videos and go check this out. I will and watch just... every one of them that you send me, I promise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I swear it. I will watch them. Uh, it'll be like, oh, here's today's Pence move. video. Look at how his lips don't move, but his eyes kind of do this weird thing. So he's <laughs> he's charging that battery. That's a wet yeah. cell waiting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I hate to do this. Can I ask you to cover for me for just another minute? I have to go to the bathroom so damn I'm bad. Not, I'd love it. I'd, I'll read some. Uh, yeah, I'll read some tweets here. Some yeah, chat. read some of the chat and, and get in fights with them. That's always good. <laughs> All right, bitches. Let's see what you got. <laughs> Let's see what you got. All right, give me the good Jericho, stuff. Don't do me wrong. All right, let's see. Doctor, uh, let's see. Oh, my God, really cool. It looks like. Oh, somebody doesn't like my what I said. Some nobody says ridicule the, the way a man looks when you can't take on his character. Oof, that's some tough talk, man. That's a very manly thing to say. It's a, it's a good point. You shouldn't make fun of the way somebody looks, but I think his mannerisms are weird. He's uh he's definitely got something weird going on with the way he presents himself. I think it's it's a little rehearsed, a little too rehearsed, and nobody's told him, "Hey, dial it back a little bit." Dial it back a little bit. I don't dislike the guy. I just think his public persona is a little strange. Uh Yan Zhao says, "Listen here, bidet. Don't you threaten Cher Kun. Cher, Cher, Cher Kun. Um, thanks, Jean Zhao. Thank you for the, uh, the virus you inflicted on our country. Um, Drew Kilborn says, end the quarantine so we can all get corona and purge the weak from society. Well, that's fucking dark. That's very, uh, it's not friendly at all. It's not very nice. So it's kind of uh it's kind of mean actually. Um SD anime says lol. Shishku toner says lol. Uh somebody say something. Oh, here we go. Sword and scale says Ryo Hoshi. Have you covered Charles no he's have you covered Charles Davis Lawson offering his offing his family we don't do requests dude i'm sorry thanks for that though oh my god i'm back yeah sorry I was insulting your fans um, you were you were insulting them bidet is a toilet says mama bear <laughs> <laughs> did you did you buy a bidet yet uh you know i was th i was so close but i already had like um three years worth of toilet paper from Amazon Prime, so um, no. I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna buy one, but I'm gonna I'm gonna take a blood sample from the electrician who comes in to install it myself. Listen here, you motherfucker! You're not coming into my house with that Corona cough. Electrician, no. so you're getting the one that has the warm water and all that. That's oh the... yeah, if you're gonna buy one, you gotta buy the good one, right? That's actually, you know, I've always wanted one of those like really fancy Japanese toilets with the. The whole button system and the my dad has one like you walk by it is this is so weird it it cracks my kids up uh because they have like a a bathroom that you kind of walk through or whatever and if you walk past the toilet it um the lid opens up it opens on its up. own yeah yeah, yeah and yeah. my kids yeah. are always like what the? <laughs> they don't know what to do with it at all i i went i saw one of the we had we stayed in a hotel where they had one of those and i was like Oh my God, this is fucking magic. I must have it. Uh, but yeah, that's, it's amazing. Those things are fucking cool shit. They have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. They do all <laughs> kinds of stuff with them. I just want it to be a Wi-Fi hotspot for my phone because 
my phone gets shitty reach in my bathroom. And sometimes I have to watch some YouTube videos. Uh, Siren Jag says, Nick, guess what? Here in Kentucky, a very red state, during his pre press conference, you're a red state, but a blue governor and uh, just an absolute cuckback. After Governor yeah. Bashir stopped uh, elective procedures in the state to conserve PPE, we heard that he allowed abortion clinics to continue to operate. We'll see how that goes for him. Um, good luck to Andy Bashir. Have you seen this thing uh, where where Governor Bashir is being lauded as the sex icon of coronavirus? Oh God. <laughs> because no one has anything to worry about. We're worrying about how hot a, a retarded governor is. Um, and the answer is he's not. That, that's the answer for every governor. They're not. They're not hot. They're terrible. No, I'm glad I hadn't seen that. That would just piss me off. Can I get your opinion on the Kentucky bro, though? Because uh, this is what I was talking about on the kill stream. Wow. Um, the, so Bashir comes out. And he says that Kentucky man has tested positive for coronavirus, left the hospital against medical advice, refused to isolate. So he posted a 24 seven armed guard outside the guy's house. Okay? okay. Now wife of the guy came out like a couple days later and says, my husband and I were not told to stay at the hospital because he was not tested for coronavirus. He has COPD uh, and went in for low oxygen. While he was there, he was tested for two types of flus, and he had a blood culture done. They never told us about a coronavirus test. She checks his medical records. No coronavirus tests in the online medical records. They hire an attorney. A law firm checks the medical records. No coronavirus tests in the medical records. But the governor still locks this guy down. What do you think about that? Who do we believe? Do we believe the governor and the media? Do we believe the random lady? Um, the interesting thing, of course, is there are six adults in this house. Do you have the verifiable med Do you have the records or do you have the, no one documents? has the records. So it's just what she's saying as opposed to the governor. Yeah. But the interesting thing is the governor hasn't produced the records either. Well, yeah, I think I, I, I'm pretty sure he's probably busy right now. <laughs> I mean, right. I, but, but here's yeah, the thing, like yeah. you lock someone down, they say, I've never been tested. I don't have a record of this. Right. Who do we believe? That's pretty shitty. The whole thing. I don't, I've never. I've, I haven't heard of this case. I'd, I'd like to know more about it. Maybe we can tweet about it. But um, I'll send you. I'll send you the links that I have to it. And uh, and it, it's 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 a scary one to me. But go ahead. Yeah. On, on its face, you're right. On its face, it sounds like a, a horrible uh, violation of civil rights. But um, I just I don't know enough about it to comment. Okay. So if the guys got corona, okay. This is a philosophical question because we don't know yeah. if the guy's got Corona. Verifiable. He, verifiable. Like, let's yeah. say that the wife is a lying bitch and yeah. he was tested for coronavirus or even the wife was wrong. He was testified. Uh, he was tested for coronavirus. He's got it. The governor's got the info on his desk, although with HIPAA, yeah. I don't know how that happens. But either way, let's say he's got it. Yeah. He leaves the house. What do you do? You arrest the guy or you shoot him? No, you don't shoot him. Um, so China <laughs> back in, so this is when I, this is when I started to buy bullets. <laughs> Let's go back. Let's go back to February 1st when I started to buy bullets. Yeah. Um, China was welding its own citizens in their apartments. <laughs> Totalitarianism they, is massively bar, effective. They would put these fucking metal bars on the door. And weld them in place so you couldn't get out of your apartment. Yeah. And I don't I don't know. Look, I I don't speak Chinese. So some of these uh tweets that I saw and stuff were were translated, and I don't know exactly how great that translation is, but the I don't know if they went and go, uh, do you have enough food and water for like a week? You know, it's, cause it's a tough question, right? Cause, cause they just welded them in there and shut the fucking, and this was literally thousands of Chinese citizens in Wuhan. Now that's the, the interesting thing about the Kentucky is allegedly they have six adults in the house. I don't know what that means. I don't know why there are six adults, but they're all locked in 
And the husband and wife who are at the center of this say that uh, because the wife was in surgery prior to the coronavirus, and the husband was caring for her. He actually didn't have time to go to the store to do the prep thing. So they say they don't have enough food. That's a All scary right. proposition, right? And it is. it's fucking terrifying. And so, and the other crazy thing is because they're, according to the governor, a walking bioweapon, they've received death threats. They've received threats of violence against their family and their property. If the government is going to shut you in and prevent you from being free and doing your life. They better fucking compensate you. Yeah. They better make sure that you have what you need. So if they're going to lock you in their home, they better make sure you have food and water and necessities, medicine, whatever you may need. They better make sure of that. If they're going to lock people down in a state or a city, they better make sure at, that they can pay their bills and their rent yeah. and, and stay you know, locked down without having to worry about all things they have to worry about because for a lot of people, it's a constant – like, if what you're gonna, do I do? I need, I need to pay my bills. What do I do? What do I do? It's a stressor they can't fucking get away from. And if the government doesn't come in and go like, well, here you go. Here's a check. Here's a lot of money. If here you're you going to ask people to give up their essential liberty, you better give them the security that they're trading it for. You absolutely better do that. And I think that the, the Congress has failed us horribly during this crisis. I don't like the way that the Trump derangement syndrome crowd has been like, oh, it's the Trump virus. <laughs> I, it's so fucking retarded. Like, first of all, uh, the, these are the same people that are, that are saying you can't call it the Chinese virus because, oh my God, that's racist. We don't call it Even, the Chinese, we call it the Wu flu. That's the, Or the, the Kung Wu, flu. Well, you know what? The people in Wuhan were calling it the Wuhan flu. And yeah. still call it the Wuhan flu to this day in Wuhan. Yeah. So there's nothing racist about it. That's where it's from. And then this whole fucking like, you know, bullshit about um, let's let's, you know, virtue signal about the name of the thing started with uh, the Italy, it, the Italian, it literally really pretty much started with <laughs> the, the Italian Italians. I'm talking about. They infected yeah. their entire damn country Hug with social Chinese. justice. Hug a Chinese day, guys. <laughs> and then and then every other fucking stupid ass uh, outlet, media outlet picked up on it and they're there and even to this day if I if I go on Twitter and I and I call it the Chinese virus, some fucking idiot will come up and be like, "Oh, it's racist." Yeah, you everything's know? racist at the end of the day. It's so stupid. It's so fucking stupid. It's like you're you're just you're just talking about what ha you, I, it's exhausting. I, I can't even <laughs> this is this is probably gonna kill me faster than the than the Wu flu is. Just, well, just gonna put that out there. The Wu flu acts quickly. While I was in the bathroom, I actually had to piss so long that I actually contracted Wu flu and recovered oh, from God. it. Uh, oh god. Oh Jesus. No, it wasn't that bad. That's the problem. Now your virility, <laughs> your virility is probably gone, and also your organs oh, are gonna. Thank God, <laughs> thank God, I've produced enough offspring. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> you have heard that though. Like, there's all these reports of of things that haven't been reported in the in Western media. Yeah, but it affects men way worse than it does women. Uh, it actually uh, screws up your your ability to to, to produce offspring. Um, it screws up your organs. Permanent damage for lungs and kidneys and other organs. Um, that it, even if you recover from it, it's gonna probably shave off a few years off your life. Like that span. machine in the Princess Bride. Oh, I hate <laughs> that. I hate it when somebody references the Princess Bride. I've never, I've never watched the. Princess How have you Bride. never seen the Princess God Bride? Damn it, that's what everyone says whenever I say I've never watched the Princess Bride. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, don't don't ever do it. Stand by your uh, principles. Never watch it. Never okay. watch it. It doesn't I, matter. No, I, I, you know what? I was actually watching it during the Ka Kavanaugh hearing. <laughs> yeah, and then 
And then I switched the channel to actually watch what was going on in the world. Cause... Oh, no. You should have stuck with the Princess Bride. The uh, Kavanaugh yeah. thing. That was a circus that was going to end. Yeah. Uh, oh, man. Um, no, I know. And that's the problem is I don't know who to believe on any of this stuff. Is, uh, is it like, oh, is it wrecking the testicles of men? I don't know. Is it, uh, is it ravaging old women in nursing I'm homes? I'm going to tell you right now what I think. And... If I'm wrong about it, we can all have a laugh about it. You, Everybody in the chat right now can mock me. By the way, again, <laughs> however much you contribute to Nick's stream here, because you're supporting him by – if you're, you're supporting me by supporting him, uh, whatever you contribute to Nick, I'm going to dub – I'm going to you know match it, and and it's going to go to whatever charity he says to fight this, this horrible bullshit that we're going through together. So, you know – Put in a super chat in there and 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 do that. But my tell point you what, is, let me let me go ahead and say this. Yeah, I'll do it too. Oh shit! I'll match it. Wow. And that's uh, I I was gonna go off of pre YouTube numbers, so YouTube's gonna take their thirty percent cut. I'm just gonna go off of pre cut numbers. Yeah, me so, too. Yeah. So uh, so we will both match it to the yeah. charity. That is so. extremely generous, and and thank you so much for that. That is fantastic. Hey, you we know, can people, disagree on stuff and still come together, of course. People like you and me put their money where their mouth is. They don't sit there like fucking Madonna in their hot tub <laughs> and sing a little song and brush their hair and think that everybody's going to be okay because of that. Um, you know, we're actually doing something, and so and so is the super chat by raising up the ante. Come on, guys, let's do it. Yeah, so, let's do it. I shouldn't have drank so much whiskey. I would have never agreed to that before. That's a terrible choice I've just made. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, why don't we finish up the super chats that are here, plus any new ones that come in, and we can wrap up the show. Because we have, I mean, we're going a long time here. And I, I certainly respect your time and love that you're on, but I also don't want to take it all away from you. I, I'm having a fucking blast, dude. You well, can we will do it again. As long then. as you want. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, well, I appreciate it. Let's wrap up uh, tonight. And by the way, when I say let's wrap up, we've got time. Don't, don't worry. And then uh, <laughs> <laughs> we can do it again sometime as well. I would love it because uh, this has been fun. Uh, very fun. So um, I'm going to start just burning through what's what's out there. And uh, we've got Nova Zero says these Florbos taking meds, Florbos taking meds that impair their immune system so they can fail at being their imagined selves. Corona Chan will straight floor them. Also, a buddy of mine explained what Corona Chan does using the cells at work manga. So there you go. I'm not familiar with cells at work. Do you read manga, Mike? Uh, you know, I thought all that shit was stupid. <laughs> no, I, I, I grew up in the seventies. No, I was born in the seventies and I grew up in the eighties. So I, yeah. the manga thing was more of a nineties thing. So I think it was like one, I missed it by like a, a few years. So I will no. say that despite the weird backwards format of it, there are some good, I don't, I don't really read manga, but, uh, they have created some anime from it. And there's some good stories out there, but I think, like anything, there's tons of bullshit. Wait, maybe I don't know through. what the fuck I'm talking about. What is, what is the difference between manga and anime? Okay, manga is the graphic novel. Uh, it's like a China, uh, uh, Japanese comic book, so oh, okay. to speak. Okay, yeah, okay. okay. Uh, and then anime would be the animated, uh, you know, okay. TV yeah. stuff. Got it, got it. So, um. So yeah, I I but the cells at work manga. I've never I've never read it, so I don't know. Uh who knows? Marty Lund says, okay, I'm in. Good luck and God bless. Hey, thanks, Marty. David Ochoa says, I am regret. Enjoy this super chat for a hundred dollars. Wow. That was fantastic. Thank you, David. Thank you. You're hurting our wallets as we speak. It's great. <laughs> Andrew War Snowboard says, Did you see Dankula's live stream today? No. Would you have him on? In a heartbeat. Yeah, of course. Uh, Dankul is hilarious. S. Cybertas says late and flamboyant. Satanic pa Potato says late. Hashtag kick Nick. Chair Coon will be our new host. Of course, I was late because of the kill stream in which uh, did you what did you think about Dick's uh, counter roast? 
I, I didn't get to see all of it. I just uh it's Dick, a little Ma Dick Masterson is a is a very um polarizing figure. <laughs> <laughs> so, I love him. I think he's great. Uh but I thought I I think he's better just angry and off the cuff than he was with the written jokes. Um so. It's tough to hear him sometimes on the on the live chats because I think um the stream sort of cuts him off a little bit when he's really rearing up to to give a punchline. Yeah. Um He's a funny guy. I, I think he's a very funny guy. I, I think he's probably really uh, great in stand-up. Um, I don't know a lot about him. Would you ever go I on his to... show? Absolutely, if you ask me to, I, for sure. I'll, uh, uh, I'll get you in contact. It'd be great. Yeah, I, I think I've, I've had some people come to me and be like, you should be on um, his... Well, especially after we got sort of kicked off of Wondery yeah. and they were threatening to kick, kick us off of Patreon. Um, which, by the way, we developed our own platform to make sure that Patreon could never kick us off. Yeah, you have Sword and Scale um, Plus now, right? Like yeah, that's it's the... our it's our own sh it's our own shit. We built it, uh, and so a lot of people back in March of last year were like, "You should get on Dick's thing," and it was like project number two or something. new, new like, project two <laughs> yeah yep. and i was like what the fuck is this nonsense? <laughs> it's like, what well, is this shit? it's great, and uh, let me tell you why it's great. Yeah. Because when Jordan Peterson, uh, biggest brain Jordan Peterson and uh, what's it, what's his face? Dave Rubin. Yeah. We're like, yeah. we're going to cut off uh, Patreon because of what they did to Sargon. Right. Yes. Yeah. That, no, I was at that time. I was like, well, fuck Patreon. I'm getting off Patreon, too. I, I was, too. And then I was like, as ah, story sounds a little more complex. And so what I did was when Dick created New Project 2, I set up one of those along with my Patreon yeah. And uh, so it's like, okay, you have an well, option. If you don't well, like listen, Patreon, go here. Uh, listen here, you you fucking pussy. Um, <laughs> we were the number three creator on Patreon when that went down. Wow. And and I and I publicly said at that moment, um, we're getting off of this bullshit platform because they kicked off Sargon of Akkad for saying the N word to a bunch of white supremacists. Nine years prior on a different platform and a different channel. It was it was some shit. I'm with and you. And it was like, that's not in your terms of service. You're just making shit up as you go along. And you and your buddy uh, Zuckerberg are getting together or whatever. Uh, and and just, just coming up with shit on the fly to ban people you don't like. And this was... I think it was a month after uh, Alex Jones got uh, kicked off of yep. all of the platforms at once. Alex Jones got kicked off of the earth. He got punted into the goddamn earth, space. <laughs> the earth, except for Twitter. And then it was like he went one more video and then Twitter went, it was like, okay, goodbye. Yep. Yep. And, um, and it was a, a scary time. I think that was the scariest time for free speech that we've ever seen in this country since. Well, yeah. A, a, a British weirdo gets kicked off of an American platform and we are, we are, it, it, it literally creates a free speech crisis. Uh, so much so that a couple Canadians <laughs> removed themselves from is Dave Rubin Canadian Sargon or uh, Jordan Peterson is I don't know uh, Jordan is. Peterson is. Uh, yeah. Is and, Rubin uh, Canadian? I don't know. No. No, he's he's gay. I know. I know those things are <laughs> interchangeable. That's but... the same as Canadian. Yeah. No, yeah. but it, it is interesting though because it really was a question. Um, but the reason I like New Project too is because Jordan Peterson and Dave Rubin were like, "We're going to create a new platform yeah. uh, to rival Patreon," and Dick said, "These jackasses are going to overthink it so much; it's going to take too long." I'll make it. And so he made one that well, weekend. Well, don't you don't you think that something called New Project 2 has been maybe underthunk a little bit? <laughs> Come it, on. Uh, you know what? For the for Come the people on. it serves, it functions really, really so, well. Yeah, I wasn't gonna do I was gonna put all my eggs in, in a project called New Project <laughs> 2. So yeah, no, we built our own thing. Um and, and actually I actually got reached out uh, by Dave Rubin after that. And when he had sort of what he had come up with, um, 
I actually talked to, to them a little bit, but I think at that point we were so, you know, it, really into what we'd already built that, you know, th that's what we're going with. Listen to this guy. Oh, Dave Rubin called me up. <laughs> oh, I'm not trying to, I'm not hung. No, <laughs> I'm just I'm kidding. Trying to I, do that. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. Uh, I'm just saying, Dave, you never call. No, no, Dave. Dave's a, actually really. He's he's cool. He's a he's a nice guy. He's he's very busy. He we're, he doesn't chat with me. We're not friends. No, no, no. Uh, he's too busy for me. But but you know, he did he did reach out as one of the people. Again, I was the number three creator on Patreon at the time. So damn, there was I think there was an article written about me because of that. Um, about that at that time, and that was helpful to that whole cause, and and that's when Sargon. Uh, not, not Sargon. That's when um, a bunch of other YouTubers started uh, doing uh, s streams about me, like uh, Jeremy from uh, the quartering. quartering. Yeah. And um, uh, uh, what's the other? Uh, uh, Jarbo. Uh, <laughs> Mundane Matt. Uh, yeah, Matt Jarbo. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and that's and that's one of the and that's sort of like my entry into this whole weird weird world of YouTubers who are so fucking nasty to each other and all hate each other for some reason <laughs> that uh uh it's fun to it's fun to be in this world but uh it's very it's strange I don't, i'm not i don't feel like i belong here it is a weird place um real quick how is your how has it worked out for you i mean you you went off of the platforms you created your own things did you yeah. find a comparable response or has it been uh has it been a struggle or what what's the what's the word on that well, the wonderful thing about recurring revenue streams is that once you get people to sign on, um, they just kind of stay there. Yeah. And, and then to then take all of those people and try to move them to a different platform. It's hard as shit. their will. Yeah, it's not easy. It's not easy. But I'll tell you this. We, we, we're way beyond where we were a year ago. And nice doing way better than we were a year ago and, and doing just doing just great. And now we control the platform and we don't have, we don't have to ever worry about some jackass in Silicon Valley going, well, I didn't like what he said on the Ricada um, live stream. <laughs> so I think we should ban him and take away, separate him from all the people that want to give him monthly revenue. Is that a challenge? Because that's literally what Patreon. Patreon is like, hey, all we are is a fucking middleman. We're just gonna stand here in the way and go, hey, uh, I don't like what he said, and I don't care if there's uh, twenty thousand people that want to give him uh, five bucks a month. Um, we are the platform, and we're gonna decide that he does not belong in our um, world, our our universe, our culture. Yeah. So he's got to go. Are you worried about the credit card processor just dicking you over? Yes. And that's why we have, we, we, we got Stripe. We started with Stripe. So we got to start somewhere. We started with Stripe. Yep. We added PayPal two months ago. And uh, in the next couple of months, well, we're going to be launching our own apps in Android and iOS. But nice. over the next year, we're going to add uh crypto yeah Damn. what you gotta you gotta add like the most russian sounding bank you can find too well we're gonna add a <laughs> crypto payment option crypto recurring payment option if you want to join that way and try to make it as seamless and easy as possible but make it so that there's no way that mastercard or visa or american express can come and, and say well we don't agree with your what were your politics and so we're gonna take away your money yeah, because Dick got a hiccup from Discover, the yeah. card that nobody uses. Yeah. Uh, and they're like, look, you got to shut this guy down. And so he had Dick, to get it. Discover is like the basic bitch credit card is pretty much what it I've is. I've never even had one. I don't think my I think my mom has one. Yeah, it's a, uh, called my mom a basic bitch. That's uh, that was I rude to get off stream. Maybe you I, do want her to die. That's this is awful. yeah. Maybe Discover card point. was the card where uh, that they used when I was in banking to illustrate the dangers of um, payment calculating where they would do 
they would uh they would calculate two months of recurring balances to calculate interest and it was just a it's just a disaster and that's why the discover card always had the cash back option is because with how they how they calculated interest even with the cash back you were getting absolutely raped uh it was horrifying but uh anyway next this is this is an, this is an enthralling fucking conversation on last week, <laughs> talking about credit card terms look at holy shit because if you, How do you have a hundred thousand fucking followers, if we're talking about, credit cards? <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I'm only at 80,200. Uh, we're not, we're not at the silver play yet. No, but it's, it's, it's wild. Cause people didn't realize that, uh, the, the way they calculate interest could absolutely fist you on your credit card terms. And no, um, please keep talking about credit card terms. Well, I mean, this is really just turning me off. You know what? <laughs> you know what? I thought I thought you cared, and it turns out you were just mocking me. So I'm going to go back to Super Chats. Next, he says, I'm dipping into the TP fund for this one. I'm getting paid despite COVID-19 lockdown here. So find a way to help people who aren't getting paid. Cons, uh, consult unstupid Twitter for suggestions. Uh, well, maybe, maybe. Michael Strelitz says, here you go. The SJW world is full of hate. Twatter should be gone. UK mail is down. And I thank you guys. Hey, thanks, buddy. Uh, so they're not even delivering mail in the UK yet. Uh, Christopher French says, I work at Kroger and people are definitely not thinking things through because of Corona Chan by wearing masks and not protecting their eyes. Uh, how many eyeballs have you licked during this crisis? It can't get in your eyes. If, if somebody sneezes or coughs, um, the particles can't get in your eyes and infect you with coronavirus. Have you ever it's licked an eyeball know. in your life? They could be 10 feet away and still, uh, no, 10, 10, what is it? 10, 10 feet? I don't know. 10 feet. They could still uh, infect you. But that's not the question you. I asked you, sir. I asked have you, I ever been coughed in the face? No, have purpose? you ever licked an eyeball? Oh God, fuck no. Well, you don't have the... Let me, I'll get Drexel your number and, and then we can, he can educate you. I Nick mean, he, Hex, knows all the, he knows everything that's going on. <laughs> Nick Sex says, yeah, under thunk indeed. It's almost as if Dick doesn't care because he doesn't profit from it. And it's not an open invite platform. Ooh. Uh, Fallout boss 34 says, Nick, ask Mike about the line he set up for male sex abuse victims. Thanks for your oh. help on that, Mike. Not many want to talk about it when it happens to men and boys. Thank you for that. Um, so we we did an episode. We we've done a lot of episodes about um, child uh, child abuse, child sexual abuse, uh, and so we we did uh, one particular episode where um, we we uh, we we did a story about. Uh, about that particular subject and sure. it, it got so much of a response. It was actually, it was very n nice. I, 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 it's, I don't know what the word is heart, you know, heartening and, and also just, uh, really scary, despicable, you know, like the fact that there was such a response to it. Um, and so many people called in and left messages about what they had gone through mm -hmm. that um, we had to do it again. And so we did uh, not too long ago. We said, and, and this time I wanted to really sort of take advantage of the ability of our platform and or the far reaching aspects of it to let people um, share their own personal stories because I, one of the senses I got from the whole thing was that a lot of people di didn't have anyone to talk to about these things that had happened to them. Right. And these are people that are like 40, 50, and they're talking about shit that happened when they were like 16, you know, it, uh, it molds the life that follows, you know, it, that it's a trauma that, that goes with people, uh, for forever. It's, it's really um, something that a lot of people uh, 
And again, you know, I was trying to be very careful with the whole Me Too thing because there's a lot of people that have suffered really horrible sexual abuse and rape and all that kind of stuff. And I don't want to minimize what they've gone through. Right. Um, I I know people like that. I know people that have gone through horrible things and I, and I, and I care about those people and I understand um, how sensitive these topics are, but um, there were people that were reaching out to us that, hadn't talked about things that had happened to him for years. So we set up um, a call line after this one episode we did. Um, I can't remember the exact number uh, that we did, but but uh, it was not too long ago. And we called, uh, uh, we set up a, a phone line where you could just call in and leave whatever you wanted to say. And you could just, you didn't have to leave your name or any information. You could just say, uh, whatever you wanted to, and we would take that and put it into a website called Surviving This, sure, and uh, publish it. And the idea being, it would be published without any personal information, right? It was just, uh, you know, just a, a a a random account in a voicemail fashion of what you wanted to say. And then people could leave messages and interact, and and then maybe in 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 that way there would be a, a sense of healing, a sense of getting it off your chest, getting getting these things out there that you desperately wanted to say, but you didn't know who to talk to, you didn't know what to say to anyone, and so we did that, and then we immediately got uh, attacked by the mob that hates me, that wants everything that I ever do to fail, <laughs> and they. Uh, they started leaving negative. So we, we put it out as a podcast. So right. literally all the, all the voicemails were in a podcast and you can actually look it up surviving this um, by incongruity. Sure. And they started leaving negative reviews and it's like, you're, you're literally shitting on survivors of rape just cause you don't like me. Yeah. That's despicable. And so I wrote this whole article about it. And if you go to my website, mikeboudet.com, you can read the whole, I'm not going to bore you with the details, but you can read the very specific details and see the screenshots of the Facebook group organizing to leave me negative reviews about this specific podcast that's only intended to highlight abuse rape stories by children. Yeah. And how despicable that is. I can't even, I mean, you can, you know, judge for yourself, but that's, that's literally where we are. You know, that's, it's, that's, uh, it's shit, man. Like, Hmm. You just, uh, you try and make something good. And people are like, well, this podcast was, it was not a podcast. It was literally just a collection of voicemails. There's no host. There's no ads. There's no monetization of any kind. You didn't didn't make your dirty money off of it. I'm, I'm spending (laughs) a, I'm spending money to keep the website up. Yeah. Just so that these people can have their story available to those that want to see it and read about it and respond to it. It's literally a negative revenue stream. And people are using it as a vehicle to try to attack me and go after me personally. Because they just don't like what I stand for, my character, the fact that I was mean to them at one point because they have blue hair. And it doesn't look good, though. The blue hair never looks good. <sighs> no, no, I never did. Have never you did. ever met a blue hair that looked good? They're usually very angry. So, yeah, that's the first thing that makes you look bad. Also fat. Well, that's my words. Now, you don't have to adopt that. No, no, I've 
I've had enough of that. I've had enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I will I will call a whale a whale all day. Um okay, back to the uh, well, thank you for setting that up. That's that's a cool place and it sucks that people attacked you. That took way longer than it should have. I'm sorry. No, don't doesn't bother me. Uh Satanic Potato says late hashtag kick Nick Chair Coon will be our new host. Clay's roommate says, Hey Nick, good job on the roast. Hey, thanks, buddy. Uh, Chengis Khan says, Nick, tell Drex to start his channel already. Look, I'm going to, I'll tell him. He just won't listen. 113657 says, do you think this, uh, this gen's need for instant gratification has led to more mass shootings and less serial killers? What do you think about that, Mike? The recent wave of mass shootings? What? Do we think that this generation's need for instant gratification has led to more mass shootings and less serial oh. killers? Mm. That's an interesting point. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I mean, like, I don't easy, have time right? to patiently select out my victims autistically to murder them. I need to go just do it all at once at one nightclub or whatever. Too, I think it's two different types of uh, mental illness. Um, I think the mass shooting thing is completely different than the. They, I don't think they're related. I do I, too. I I'm yeah. the same. Uh, it's it's interesting though. It's an interesting thought uh, to try and figure out what is driving mass shootings. I think notoriety, right? Like in nihilism, are driving mass shootings. But, how do you how do you enjoy the notoriety once you're dead? I don't think it's enjoying the notoriety. I think it's I think it's kids. Uh, largely young adults, kids thinking I will never make an impact on this world. Here's the one way I can and doing it. Well, uh, that's just fucking sad. Yeah. Like, holy shit. And I think uh, that's a mistake. I think because you may not impact the world in any appreciable way until you're old, right? Like you can, this is cheesy, but think of actors who came into their primes in their sixties um uh, not everybody is not everybody is doing everything they want to do when they're 20 actors i'm thinking about me motherfucker i i started <laughs> i i was in a shitty job one of many shitty jobs in a long line of shitty jobs in 2014 when i was uh what is that 38 39 what was your last shitty job what were you doing I was working at a, uh, I don't know if I should say, uh, oh, it's me. Should I say that? I was working at a company called Levenger. Levenger? Never heard Levenger. of Levenger. They make leather goods, leather products, and then- well, Like BDSM originally, stuff? They originally started as a lamp company <laughs> uh, in New York. Yeah. Like selling lamps secondhand, like basically buying and reselling lamps. Sure. And then- they evolved into a leather goods company where they would sell um, briefcases and portfolios and things like that. Oh, so not Which like things. dirty stuff, just real mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and pens. Pens was a big thing. They, like, like fancy pens, you know? Um, and I was – I sort of – it was a point in my life where I had uh, – I had shifted from one job to another to try to make more money. And then I had to quit that job because it was the worst job ever I've ever had in my life. Yeah. And, um, and then I had to get a job, but it was a really bad time in the economy. And so I had to drive an hour to Delray beach from Fort La from where I was in Miramar, uh, and back every day. So it was oh, like two hour, two hours every day. Yeah. And, and then they would pay me less than I was making two years prior. Like it was Ugh. the shittiest job. And I would go to this place, which was pretty much a ghost town. It was this big ass building. And, uh, the, the company had pretty much seen its heyday and, and it's had come and gone. And it was just this a mostly abandoned building with just lots of empty space and just a few old people that were just <laughs> hanging on for dear life to their jobs. 
Well, they're all dying uh, from Corona now, so that's good. Oh, and it was just so depressing going in there and every day. It's just like, ah, uh, yeah. And my job was marketing, so every time that n- nobody wanted their products was, you know, my fault. That was another great, wonderful perk of the job. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. Shit. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I shouldn't be shitting on this company. <laughs> well, you're not shitting on the company. You're just saying that the job, it wasn't for you. It was a terrible job. And I was very upset, upset working there. And I wanted to leave so badly. And that's when sword scale started. Nice. That's sometimes what you need, right? Yeah. You need to be in the worst place of your life. You need to be, uh, you need to grow up in darkness like uh Bane. So if the, you're thinking of Corona Channing in Italy, you need to stop and realize that you've got a lot of life left in you and uh, you probably aren't where you're going to end up. So uh, there's some good stuff waiting. Painful buggery says the international women's day March in Spain is responsible for skyrocketing Corona virus rates there. Rude, wow. rude, for, rude of women to kill Spain. Blaine 20 says NYU is refusing to refund tuition and fees for this. semester. Yes. I saw that. That was fucking ridiculous. Yeah, it's uh it's pretty interesting. Like you you take their in-person learning program and then you cancel half of it and say you can do this distance shit that no one cares about, but no. we're not going to give you any money back. No, it's worse than that. There's the fucking professor is doing a little dance to an REM song on Twitter. Look it up. It's, <laughs> no, I'm not I'm not shitting you. Look it up. It's fucking insane. Was it the end of the world? Is that the song they She's picked? mocking the fucking student that's asking for their money back. She's mocking them by doing a little REM dancing oh. the REM. And she dances to the whole fucking song. Which that's, is like, what are you doing? Wow. What are you doing? Yeah, she should be fired immediately and the uh the the school should come out with an an official response. Even if their response is the same, it should be more thoughtful than I'm going to dance and mock you. Um, yeah, that's crazy. I, I think that Corona will hopefully, hopefully give people perspective on what we actually need these damn buildings for. Right? Like nothing. We, we, <laughs> there are very few things that we actually need to go to a building for school, yeah. college. You don't need it. It's, it's all this. It's, it's decades old thinking. That we've just been stuck into this pattern and routine, but look, we... I don't. I, I, I'm not trying to get points for this. I'm just saying this because it's true. I built my company when I started this whole idea because I was in that fucking cubicle, yeah. hating my fucking life, going to work, commuting an hour to Delray Beach so that some dickhead could make sure I was in my cubicle for eight hours a day. Not even knowing what the fuck I did for for a living, right? But just making there, and then driving an hour back every day. When I was like, I could perfectly do this job from my house in my pajamas every day mm-hmm. and do it better without wasting two hours in traffic. And when I built my company, we built it that I built it that way. We have eight employees. They all work in different parts of the country. Uh, they all work from home. They work whenever they want. There's no set hours. The only thing that we demand is that we have a one one hour. Uh, it's a half hour meeting once a week on Tuesdays, and that's it. Just so we all get on the same page, and um, they all make way more money than they would in a traditional job. Yeah, in in this industry, and um, during this whole thing, when I saw. What was going on with coronavirus, which is about a week ago, with the whole um, the, the uncertainty of it and the people, uh, the certain companies out there just being really shady about what they were doing and stuff. I, I sent a, a group text out and I said, hey, guys, no matter what happens, hell or high water, you have all of you have your jobs until the end of May, period. Yeah, period. Even if you can't work, even if you're caring for a loved one, uh, if you're sick. Whatever. doesn't matter. Everybody's going to stay employed. You all have a paycheck, period. Okay, and then we'll revisit at the end of May and probably keep it going until this whole thing is over because I think you got everybody has to take care of each other and not be a fucking cunt 
during a, a pandemic, like yeah. McDonald's. And, you know, certain companies are stepping up and other ones are just failing at this. And I think it's, it's important to, to be responsible and to step up. And by the way, again, matching the super chat. Come on, guys. Let's just bring, <laughs> bring a little more super chat money uh, to Nick in, 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 in this way. We're going to match it. Uh, we're going to double it, right, Nick? Well, yeah, you're going to you know, match it. I'm going to match it. We're, we're both going to match it. So we're going to double whatever happens in the super chat um and and put it out to a charity out there to uh to help uh fight this fucking thing yeah and uh we're um that's that's awesome of you i i had a similar thing is why i went to law school actually because i was i was working for thrivent uh financial and i was working in their brokerage section and i was i actually was telecommuting we moved out to the country i used to work in downtown minneapolis and we moved out in the country and i was telecommuting then they were going to get audited by the sec and finra so they said uh hey you have a lot of uh you have a lot of that personal data on your on your company laptop there so we're gonna need you to come into the office and i said that's a two-hour drive each way he said well you can come in and stay employed or you can you can just do something else and so i said peace right because i'm it was crazy my entire hmm. job could be done from my home office uh i could be done I, I'd started at nine and I could be done by noon. And these assholes wanted me to come into work for eight hours a day with a four hour round trip commute. It was crazy. Crazy. Uh, I hope that's one thing that changes now. We need people to stay home. We need to close some of these big ass buildings. And, and I just, think it uh, will. I think that after this, there's going to be, there's going to be a real shift. I hope, I hope so. I hope a lot of these companies realize, Hey, we don't have to buy a big ass building and pay utilities and taxes and insurance and all this bullshit to get the same amount of work from these people. And imagine uh, if instead of building $60 million school buildings, they just laid fiber optic lines to every kid's house. Yeah. Like what the, what the hell are we sending kids to these giant overinflated uh, school buildings for every day? Just lay up. They're going to do the rest of these semesters from home anyway. Um, and everybody's going to realize that it's really not that big of a deal. Well, they can't do uh, beer funnels that way. And, uh... <laughs> I'm talking elementary and high school. Oh, I'm not, I'm oh, not talking okay. college yet. Yeah, you know? no, you're right. I mean, it's it's absolutely asinine to to think that in 2020, we're still requiring people to get in their fossil-fueled car. And this is the same some fucking society that thinks that like we we should stop car cows from farting. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> but but we're gonna get them get in their car and go to a university so that some s English professor could indoctrinate them into our liberal agenda. Fuck that shit. Get on the internet like you already are constantly every day, and do it from there. Jesus Christ, we have we have teledoctors now. Right, Our medical care is happening now from your mobile phone device. We have, uh, you know, a whole bunch of a whole industry that's starting up with uh, uh, mental health care from your phone. Right? Yeah. Uh, it's let's just evolve a little bit and, and maybe use this as as an example to evolve a little bit instead of keeping the whole draconian bullshit that we system that we have in place. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Gawker's death rattle says Gover government of Canada has decided my wife and I will be getting tested for the Wu flu based on symptoms we reported uh, to 811. So maybe last super chat. Cheers. Nobody live, live. We hope you we hope you live longer than Gawker. Next, he says Twitter is the pulpit in the church of stupid. <laughs> <laughs> patriotic cat says i'm in la and i get my weed delivered kind of normal hey listen not in minnesota it's not malik fox is that, a, is that an app i don't i don't know yeah. uh i know in can in canada it wasn't an app like you had to you had to order it it's legal in canada but and they have weed delivery services it's kind of crazy but it was all through their own websites i don't know maybe there's an app Malik Foxen says, look up the Drizzly app, Boomer. Maybe maybe there is an app. I don't know. Oh, shit. 
in Minnesota, that app would be super illegal. So Christopher French says, uh, if you move back to Texas, I'm in the Houston area. Maybe we could go drinking lol. Well, I hope to be down in the Houston area in July. Uh, so maybe we could go drinking anyway. We're going to fuck it up here, dude. Are, are you in the, down? are you in the Houston area? Yeah, that's where I'm at. Oh, damn it. I grew up in Houston. Uh, so if I spare bed, we could fuck it up, dude. We could fuck it up. <laughs> I, I will. I will now one thousand percent let you know if I'm coming. It depends if Corona Chan is done by July. <laughs> if she is, I will be there. James B says I tried the bear face drink. Too strong for me. I haven't tried it yet. I gotta do. I gotta do whiskey review. This bear face Canadian whiskey. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. John Hughes says, what's your opinion on hospital directors telling nurses and doctors to mandate do not resuscitate because there isn't enough supplies? Does this cross into human rights? Man, I don't I don't know. Uh, mandating do not resuscitate is weird to me. Like, I thought the doctor was to, to try and save people. Did you hear the doctor on the I, I, I don't remember her name. She's always in the press conferences with Trump today going. The media is being irresponsible by reporting on this whole uh, this whole thing, the whole thing about, you know, um, I've I've heard some stuff uh, and, and I don't know. The stuff I've heard is that the media is basically stirring up shit extra hard for their own profit, yeah. which, of course, I hate the media, but I also love profit. So I don't I don't know where I stand on that. <laughs> You know, like I think I think her point was like there was it was sensationalism. They're trying to get people scared and riled up with this whole, you know, if you get coronavirus and you have to get taken off a ventilator or if you're all that shit with the 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 people that are, may not make it and it, she was just like y- y- this is too early to be talking about this. This is really irresponsible. And I thought that was awesome. The fact that they did that. Okay, so you were you were in agreement with the uh, the Trump lady. Yeah, I think that it's way too sensationalist and irresponsible to be putting that out there right now during the what could really be a panic for for yeah. major news networks. And I, I do think I mean I think the major news networks they thrive on the panic and they've been waiting for something. That's what really bothers me about this is that there's a segment of people and they are, they are the powerful in regards to the, the media aspect who have the ability or not, not the ability, the incentive they've been waiting to get Trump on something. And they, the thing that bothered me early on was they're reporting waiting. waiting. Well, they're I mean, not waiting. Not waiting. <laughs> No, no, no. They've been waiting for something to be effective. They're just constantly throwing shit at the wall to see what happens. Right. And and so when I saw the early article saying Trump is finally responding to coronavirus and it's almost worst, you know, stuff like that. It's like, you know what? Yeah. Fuck y'all. You guys are politicizing this thing that that if if we're to believe everything that's being said about coronavirus you can't politicize it. Like, you just for first, can't do it. For the, for the first two weeks of this thing, I would just ignore anything that had any sort of political slant at all. Period. And yeah. then after three weeks, it started to piss me off. Because it's like, if you're rooting against the fucking president doing things to save all of our lives, then you're rooting against America and me and everyone else here you know so what the fuck like and there's I, a time for politics and this is not the time for it and i actually think trump has done fairly well with his response because he could have tried to shut down the country and i think he restrained himself but laid out a lot of guidelines right like Look, we think people should be doing this and this and this. And I honestly think that that's where the president should be. I disagree stuff. with you on that. But <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> I do. I disagree with you on that because all this is for nothing unless we stop the virus and we kill it. Well, so, but, but I'm taking the, that 
that question of federalism into yes and i agree and and i agree with you because i know the nature of the american society and what what people like yourself (laughs) (laughs) just say assholes no i'm just kidding no others you know a lot of a lot of people that reasonable people that that have that point of view which i agree i do agree with most of the time yeah but in this particular instance however i don't and so that's my point. And so I, I, from the very beginning, I was like, this is, n- if this hits America, we're fucked because there's no American that's going to be welded into their fucking apartment building. That's <laughs> going to go very badly the very first time that tries to happen. Oh, that would and be a so, disaster. Yeah. And disaster. so that's my point. Like, that's not going to go well. <laughs> and so, um, uh, the, yeah, so I, I knew from the very beginning this was going to be really, really bad in America. I think we're going to have uh, – I'm going to put this out there. I think we're going to have uh, – we could take maybe take a little bets on the chat here. You know, 250,000 yeah. deaths in America before this is over. I say less than 20,000. Oh, well, we're way off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. I got, All right. Well, you can't – what am I going to say? Well, I'm going to say less than 200,000. That's, that's, that's a coward's move. What's the bet? What's the bet? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Uh, when I come down to Houston. I'll, who, I will bet you one 2020 bat quarter. <laughs> bat quarter? <laughs> yeah. Have you seen this? No. For, for some reason, the fucking U.S. Mint decided to make oh. <laughs> quarters this year. <laughs> One of them has a fucking fruit bat on the back of it for 2020. I was and gonna, I was gonna you can actually buy, buy one right now. Yeah, I was gonna buy the first round of whiskey when I come down to Houston next. Oh, okay. Well, that'll do it. That'll we'll, do it. We'll do that. All right. Although we and may a, not be done yet, but we'll, we'll figure it out. And a bat quarter. And a bat quarter. <laughs> I'll, I'll find one. I'll find one. But if I lick the bat quarter, I'll get coronavirus and die. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh let's see uh oh by the way the drizzly app is an alcohol delivery app not a weed delivery app. uh that's someone wanted to uh emphasize that razor says anyone notice at the stores in the beer section every other bo- booze except corona is gone uh i told my wife that and she was just dumbfounded it was great it made me happy uh me says i love you mike you're fucking really stupid right uh, Holy yeah jesus okay. oh terribly terribly but not this person who says uh this is me says i love you mike you sexy mofo yeah i'm a chick okay oh, there you go great some nobody says is the coronavirus as deadly as they say uh wall street journal that was the i guess a headline from wall street journal reikoku ninja says try stygian reign of the old ones on steam Oh, all right. Carmel the rabbit person says uh manana manana bread? No. No. That is disgusting. What? Did you uh so you watched the stream with Drexel last night? Did you hear about the special bread? I um, no, I think I think it, I had to run upstairs to get everything set up at that point. God saved you, my friend. Okay. All right. I was talking to a guy in my Discord. Oh, come bread. Yeah, come bread. Yeah, I saw that part. Yeah. That's, that's horrifying yeah uh if you could if you could get the secrets of financial success by eating cum bread on a thursday in late may would you do it i think i'm good good. (laughs) beige devil says this guy is why i will never surrender my rifle Ooh, me uh yeah well this this was a while back this is two hours ago no one important says oh damn chat he's calling you out that was the uh, the announcement of the super chat thing. That guy says, "So if I cho- super chat one thousand dollars, that's okay." Yes, if you want to super chat a thousand dollars, please do. Please, uh, we will match it. CJ says, "USO," since they get the short end all the time. X Varna says, "News in Canada is reporting that Trump is militarizing the border to protect Americans." Unless someone said America's got the puck, I can't see why they think America would have to fear from Canadians. Did you see the article today about Mexicans shutting down their northern borough border? <laughs> Did you see that? No. Because holy fuck, that's amazing. This is what it takes? This is what it takes for Mexico to clamp Trump down? Not only Trump build the wall, he made them pay for it. <laughs> right? 
<laughs> he, he Mexican. Gets, it's a BBC article. I'll send it to you if I could. Uh, it's on. It's on my Twitter. I think BBC reported Mexican Mexicans protested and successfully shut down the southwest south southern border of the United States, otherwise the Mexican northern border. Yeah, because they don't want Americans with coronavirus crossing the border. <laughs> Oh, Fucking, shut it down! No, you get you, you have to laugh, dude. I oh, mean, of course, it, it, holy yeah. shit, it's great. It's like an M Night Shyamalan twist. Uh, Warrex says I would never give the government powers willingly because they will never give those powers willing give up those powers willingly. Just take a look at us in Europe. Ooh, uh, I, I mean, he's true. He's got a point. You know? Yeah, that that's always a question, right? Like, it, do they give it back? They never do. They do. No, they never do. Fluffy side but you up. know what? If, whatever you're going to do now, you can do in three months. That's my point. That's my argument. We'll see. We'll see. Fluffy they're, side up. You're not going to have better tanks three months from now. It's going to be fine. You know, <laughs> you're going to have the same guns. They're going to have the same tanks. It's the same shit. Fluffy side up says, if I lose my mom or grandparents because some dumb gun won't stay home and you think that's okay either way, either. Uh, and you think that's okay either away with Corona. Uh, no, I don't think I think I think people should self isolate. I really do. I just don't like the government telling them to do it uh, with guns. That's my thing. Blaine twenty says Taiwan number one. China didn't finish. <laughs> this guy sounds like Grums. We need him on the show soon. It's one of my favorite memes, by the way. Taiwan number one. <laughs> I uh, love that shit. Dan Platt says maybe give to St. Jude's. No, no, I will not. St. Jude's has lost my charity. Uh, Justin, they told me they didn't want my money. Justin, what Anderson, happened with that? What what happened? That's the kill stream, man. When when uh, uh, when they did the heel stream, raised twenty six grand for cancer kids and oh, Saint Jude. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and Saint Jude's is like, nope, we don't want their Nazi oh, money. Fuck you. It's like I'm not a Nazi. I donated they, to that. Did they take money from the fucking McDonald's? Uh, the Ronald McDonald House or something? No, the McDonald's scam. The the is that the yeah I think it is isn't it the, I don't know did you watch that McMillions documentary on HBO no oh, I it's will fucking though. great watch it it's it's fantastic yeah. yeah I think they took money from that shit that was a fucking scam of the century <laughs> yeah uh, Justin Anderson says donate to a food bank charity in your area they need all the help they can get and they're helping a lot of people dealing with this right now listen. My food bank in my area, I sat on a charitable board uh, that that operated a second food bank where people would donate uh, a lot of food and they they cut it off. They cut it off, which was ridiculous because uh, it was like they were cooperating for years. Taiwan as, number one. As two food banks. Taiwan number one. <laughs> and then the, and then our local, like the main food bank was like, nope, we're not helping. We're not helping or accepting donations from you guys anymore. That was stupid. So no, not my food bank. Maybe yours though. I, I, the I, I, may, I may have had too much to drink. <laughs> that's, that's always the goal of this show. Vine the Coleman says, hey, Nick, I have no opinion either way about Corona Chan. I'm a hermit anyway, so I'm good staying at home. <laughs> I'm of the mind that whatever happens, happens. No point in worrying. Thanks, Mike, for donating. Uh, Manic Mole Man says, from a Finnish point of view, Mike can be quite condescending, but he ha but has his points. No bully. So there you go. No, I'm actually a complete cunt. So. <laughs> Maybe you have had too much to drink. You're not supposed to use the C word anymore. I thought you got oh. appropriately castigated by, by Twitter for C wording. You know, I just don't care anymore. I, I, after going through this thing, I, you know, I've had enough anxiety and bullshit that I've dealt with yeah. about losing everything I've ever worked for and having actually come out of it and being okay. I don't give a fuck. You're a, uh, Hey, Hey, come after me, bro. <laughs> you know, like, come on. Like biblically <laughs> you're refined by fire, right? You're a. Uh... You went through the furnace. You walked out the other side. Now you get to say, fuck you, you cunts, to everybody I'm who never, says anything. I'm never going to bow down to these fucking idiots ever again. And uh, that's too bad for them. Yeah. It's too bad. That's the real risk. Is anybody that they don't destroy 
becomes terrifying. Um, anybody who can, anybody who can support themselves and doesn't have a boss that they can Twitter brigade with emails and get canceled. Suddenly it's like, Oh shit, we can't actually stop this person. That's horrifying. Oh, they're going to keep them. trying for the rest of their lives. Yeah. They, they are because that's all they know. But I think, I hope at some point in my lifetime, this is, is you know, real people realize what this is for what it is, and just it it, it ends at some point. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's wishful thinking. Bad Vibe says, there ain't no rest for the wicked. Money don't grow on trees. I got bills to pay. I got mouths to feed. Ain't nothing in this life for free. Uh, thank you. Timothy Reaper says, I suggest whatever charity will send Nick Ricada 500 gallons of military special. Please no. Please no. That's bad whiskey. Krunu says, uh, Killery is best killer. <laughs> uh, Cemetery Lady says, can you guys pray for my brother, please? He's an EMT and has been exposed to Corona. Him and fiance going on a three week quarantine with no work. Thank you. I, I will do that. Cemetery lady. Got the Rona. Uh, good. Best of best luck and best wishes to him. Hopefully, uh, hopefully he's able to weather it. Bad vibe says, wait, so are you are suing because your livelihood was taken, but potentially millions being economically wrecked is acceptable. Oh, is that a contradiction to you? Wait, <laughs> uh, I don't understand that one. I don't think they're the same thing, uh, frankly. But uh, so they're saying, I guess they're saying that you're you're OK with people being economically wrecked by a government shutdown. But uh, when it happened to you by Twitter brigade or whatever that you're. No, I'm not OK with people being wrecked by an economic sh uh, shutdown. I, I've, I said it again. I said it uh, before. Sure. The government needs to step up and pay people appropriately for sheltering in place. The entire purpose of the fucking government is to step in when nothing else can. Sure. And that's the job that they have to do. And so they better fucking pay your rent and your utilities and every, all every one of your bills while they're ordering you to shut in place. Otherwise. Yeah. I agree with Nick. Fuck the government. Let's go fuck them up. Uh, yeah. I think he said, go get your guns and go shoot up uh, your local. Uh, I didn't say said, that. That's not what I, like that. that's I, not I, what I said. I don't remember verbatim <laughs> what he said, but he said something like that. Uh, my point is, I agree with, yeah, they have to step up and they have to take care of us. Otherwise, fuck it. Like, this is Look, the, I, the, the social contract is broken at that point if they don't. I and, only. And, and, and that's kind of where we, we've, we've kind of crossed that border a little bit. I think I think there's going to be more bills passed in the next couple of weeks, just to be clear. Uh, and and they're going to take care of uh, all of the other needs because this last bill was just complete garbage. It's uh, a mess, man. But uh, but yeah, but I'll let you I'll let you go ahead. And I was just going to say, I only advocate that if I have my Mick A10 to go brap across the uh, across the landscape. On my Somebody own clip that and send that to me in a, a, as a uh, ringtone, please. <laughs> Uh, Finn Frog says she didn't want to mess up Biden's campaign because she wants Trump to lose her own words. Imagine using or excusing grape as a victim because of politics. Yeah, it's uh, terrifying. Allison Jacobs says I worked in athletics and my boss grabbed my butt during every encounter and I finally got the confidence to reject him. I got fired. Such is life. Jesus. That every sucks. every every time. How many times are we talking about? I don't know. It's after like the third or fourth time, aren't you just going, aren't you, aren't you just like third or fourth time? Aren't you just like going, uh, this is, this is what's happening now. Yeah. It's, it's crazy, but I don't know. You know, who knows how often, uh, interact with their boss. I didn't inter for example, I didn't Perhaps interact with, what? that's cr It's, but it's athletics. Maybe, I don't know if it was a grab or a pat. It says grab. But you know the ass pad is like the thing, right? Like that's been around forever. Like NFL players with the butt. Uh, yeah, pat. like go get them, go get them. But if it's a if it's a guy slapping yeah, a girl's ass, it's no, a little that's different. Not okay. That's not okay. That's not okay. You don't do that. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you should, but people have for a long time. So. But you don't. You don't. Yeah, you don't put up with that. Yeah. You have to. No. 
Uh, Carbonite says, thanks, Mike, for agreeing with me that uh, Adnan Saeed is a guilty murderer. Rot in yes. prison. That oh, motherfucker so needs to burn. So you think Adnan did it? Who the fuck doesn't think that Adnan did it? I don't know. Like, I listened to Serial and I was like, eh, there's some real legal questions here. I don't know if they're actual questions. I think okay, they're so legal questions. Okay, so are we questions. just playing contrarian on everything, or are we just like, what the fuck? No, no, no. I, so when I look at the case that was presented by the no, prosecution. I'm, talk, I'm not talking about the case. I'm talking see, about. See, that, that's where we're different. That's where we're, okay. that's where we're finding the disagreement is I okay. say, I don't know if Adnan did it or not. What I do know is that the case presented by the prosecution and the defense presented by his defense attorney is bullshit. Okay. That, that's a mess. What does your gut tell you? My gut tells me I don't know who the fuck else killed uh, killed Hay, right? Like I can't figure out who else would have done it, so it's gotta be it's gotta be him. Mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah, mm -hmm. I, I I don't know because do you think that like maybe 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 twelve hours of an NPR produced public radio podcast in the very moment in time and history where uh, there was uh, in airports all across America after. Don't you bring context into this, you son of a bitch. <laughs> there, there were, uh, what do you call, what do you call the, you know, see, you look a little brown there. You look a little Muslim. I'm like, let's uh, pat you down. The yeah. whole. Oh, I think they picked their case very, you don't very think intentionally. That, that particular specific case was picked for that reason and that everything they talked about over the course of 12 i think it was 12 episodes 12 hour long episodes roughly was basically highlighting the fact that he's maybe innocent even though the overwhelming evidence from a case that's like decades old shows that Nobody else had any motive. Nobody else had any opportunity. And it's an, oh, pretty much an open and shut case. His best friend admitted to burying the fucking body. I think the, uh, the big problem with the defense and with the, uh, the rehearing defense that they did was they never presented a credible alternative to who would have killed her. Because that's not how it works. <laughs> You don't, it's not Matlock. But you that, that is how it works if you're trying to get it overturned. It, it shouldn't be, in a weird way, it shouldn't be. But that is, if you can't present the court, like an idea, like, not only is this guy innocent, but look, you got to look at this person that they should have gone after, even though they're not going to go after them. You right, say, no, actually, no, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I thought you were talking about the... Um, uh, I thought you were talking about the 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 defense or the um uh yeah, it's goddamn it's fucking late. We've been talking for four hours. I know. Uh my point is <laughs> I, I think I get your point. I think it yeah. was the 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 fact that this person is the most likely to have committed this crime. Yeah. Uh, they had the motive, they had the opportunity. There's like little questions that they brought up on the show about cell towers and timelines and none of it's really it doesn't make any sense it really doesn't sick none of it makes any so there the only other option there is it's some there's some random serial killer going across the country which doesn't have any other cases just this one and happened to ha pop in and kill this person at this particular point in time, and then move on and disappear, and they are never caught. Yeah, they should and have pegged it on. They should have pegged it on literally any concrete person rather than a phantom killer. That would have been yeah, a better defense. The phantom killer defense is absolutely ridiculous. It yeah. doesn't make any sense. I mean, well, I'm just to be contrarian. Now I'm Team Adnan for sure. Uh, good. Bad Dragonite says German measles, Ebola, West Nile virus, hashtag canceled. Uh, Afro man John says, anytime I can do something to make me feel better than celebrities, I'm going to take that opportunity. <laughs> That's a spirit. Sage Emerald says, my boss says, I don't need travel permit, Wisconsin. Other places got them. What do 
lawyer police love you both and love sword and scale thank you uh it's that's a tough question they they issued travel permits to essential workers in minnesota but at the same time like uh, nobody gave me a permit but i definitely if i'm going to visit a client am going to tell the police officer to eat shit because i'm an essential worker uh i probably won't have to do that very often but it's possible that it would come up so um i'm not sure the the pieces of paper that are sent out are are interesting um i don't know about wisconsin though uh what do you think what do you think mike if 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 someone gets a travel permit what or should they what should they do what what should we do with this lockdown order how do we how do we gauge who should be out and who shouldn't i, I... I don't ha I don't have an intelligent response to that. I just will <laughs> say one intelligent response to the previous question, if I could, about celebrities was, what do you think about Kathy Griffin? Oh, she got she's <laughs> she's like dying right now, right? Yeah, she's dying from the corona from the she got the Rona. Oh, that's too bad. Actually, she didn't. She's just lying to get more. Yeah. Clout. But. Sky Hime says, let's wrap up four hours later. Listen. Oh, Jesus. Listen. Yeah. Biggest Geek is, says, I'll put my money where your mouth is, too. Oh, thank you. Uh, John Russell says, count at? Can we get a count for the number of, uh, you know, we're, YouTube what we're truncates about? it when we go over four digits. Ah, so we're, we're over a thousand dollars, but I don't Fantastic. know exactly how much yet. Fantastic. I'm glad. I'm very glad about that. Uh, so Michael Michael Strelitz. Oh, I read that one. John Russell, have some of the zero dollars that the thieving state will be sending me. Taxation is theft. Rip. Sorry, buddy. Sage Emerald. Sage Emerald just sent a peach sticker. Thank you. Rhino says own platform. MasterCard slash Stripe will disagree. Good luck. Uh, we talked about that earlier. That random guy 146 says 5G being installed in your local schools without authorization. They're using the quarantine to install 5G without our what consent. The fuck is with the 5g just stop it dude just just stop act now stop. or roll over are they talking about 5g cell towers they're talking about 5g being some fucking chinese conspiracy that's like fucking getting your brain like what the like <laughs> I, look dude i'm a big fan of alex jones just fucking stop just stop i know nothing about it nothing just stop cosimo it's stupid. cosimo ayeo 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 Jesus Christ. Ontario adopted a new bill for the quarantine up to a million dollar fine or possible jail time if not self-quarantined. Woo. Uh, that's, a, that's a steep fine. Sage Emerald says, by me. Tis what do you think about the jail? Is the, legally, is that... What do you think about jail that? Jail time like, seems like a terrible plan to me. Fines. What about fines? I think if you're going to do something, fining is better than jail because you, if you've got someone who's suspected no, I'm legally, like constitutionally, like if the government were to be like national quarantine, everybody has to stay home. If you go outside and they catch you, that's not our fine. I'd fight it. I'd fight it all the way to the Supreme damn but do court. You, do you really think that, do you think that's something that they can do? No, I don't think, I think they... You know, the, the weird legal question is, can they do it? Is they will do it. The question is, will it stick, you know, and how much will you pay to fight it? And so the, you know, if it's but up if to. You, but, but if you fight it and take it to court and take it all the way to the Supreme Court, then don't you create that? Don't you create that precedent? Yeah. So now you've given the government more power. In a By weird fine. way. And also, you got to think about it. No one's going to get, if it's up to a $1,000 fine, basically no one's going to get a $1,000 fine on a first offense. Maybe on like a third or something. Yeah. But uh, but really, they're going to get like a $200 fine. And then you're like, well, I'm going to fight this. Or I could just spend $200 and not fight this. Yeah. I, I could hire an attorney for ten grand or $200. Yeah, that's the that's the nastiness of petty crime. I hate I, I don't like the system. That's the nastiness um, of the, the the civil government justice system, I think. Yeah, that's, it's that's it's, how it works. Pretty much. It is. That's why speeding tickets actually like function because no one will fight them. It's cheaper to just pay one hundred and fifty dollars and go home. Uh, Sage Emerald says by me, quote, 
Tis then veneers that our fears apply to the outward face of our facade, yet wither me not these tempering times, for I grow stronger while the world grows wronger with every passing sign. Jesus Christ! That was poetic as hell. <sighs> these poets on your fucking super tracks. Christ. <laughs> Crusader Saracen says, this guy's great, Nick. Please have him regularly. Thank you. Yeah, I like him too. WMD himself says, how about the disabled American veterans? Uh, oh, for a, for a charity. Maybe. Uh, I'm, taking, I'm taking suggestions. Gawker's Death Rattle says, much easier to move electrons than people. That's true. Biggest Geekus says, I believe in uh, hydroxychloroquine. Hashtag Trump cure. What's hydroxychloroquine? Is that... Uh... <laughs> That's the fish tank cleaner that the fucking guy died from. That was yeah. a bad plan by those people to drink that stuff. Well, you know what? You take my freedom, you take my life, or you take my liberty. And I'll or take my, a well, shot of fish tank cleaner. Yeah, what the fuck? If people are stupid, man. People uh, are fucking retarded. That's the that's the basic premise of everything that I do, and yeah. I think probably you do too. Is that's literally what happens? So go ahead. No, no problem. Rhino says, Nick, I know how you feel about insurance. I work in insurance. At least 70% of the jobs can be done from home with a company secured computer for real. And then further says, Marvel recently made all their editors work from home and all their artists work from home. 100% of comic jobs can be done from anywhere in the world. Yeah, that's ridiculous that you would have to go into a place uh, to do a comic job. Um, that's That's crazy. Spectre 06 Gaming I says... I got into... Can I... I'm sorry. Yeah, can no, I no. get one more in it right here? As much as you I, want. I got into it with this fucking bitch from the San Francisco Chronicle on Twitter. <laughs> um, oh, God. So, Let the I hate, hate flow to, through you. Yeah, no. I just... I get so mad at this shit. Because we're all trying to, like, you know, do the right thing, stay at home, not get other people infected. And she's posting this tweet about how proud she is of this this series that they they just that she just completed about San Franciscans looking out of their fucking windows out onto the street, and it's a bunch of photographs. It's like a, a collage of about sixteen photographs of San Franciscan residents looking out longingly onto the street from their residences through the window and i and i tweeted and i'm like why the fuck aren't you just home <laughs> go home and she's like well we're essential media oh and I'm like, media is the farthest and thing I'm like, from essential and i'm like and i'm like taking pictures of people looking out of their windows doesn't seem essential to me yeah and that just fucking pissed me off it's, I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, that's fine. Floor, Thank floor you. back to you. Sorry, Paul. Apologies. I, I humbly <laughs> will defer anytime you want to shit on a San Francisco media person. <laughs> like you could just call me sometime and be like, hey, I need to shit on this person. I'll have you on to say it. Holy shit. Challenge accepted. <laughs> Spectre06 yeah. Gaming says, looks like a Republican is going to mess up the stimulus. Uh, we'll see. I thought they passed it earlier in the stream, but I don't know. Rhino says, lastly, I obtained my bachelor's online. I'll do the same for my master's, all from regionally accredited universities. So many things are outdated. Oh, the idea that you need to go into a goddamn college is the dumbest shit on the planet. They're just sucking up your money. Ugh, transferring it to useless administrators. Malik Foxen says, Drizzly equals alcohol delivering app, not weed. Sigurd Helix and Crypt Keeper says, as I am a Freemason, how about the Shriners? Thank you for the suggestion. We'll take it under advisement. Hey, fin hey, can, yeah. can I be a Freemason? <laughs> <laughs> no, hit then you'd learn the, the truth about the Corona. No, hit me up in the chat. No, for real, I want to be a Freemason. <laughs> Finfrog says, the Pope endorsed Adolf Hitler back in the day. Edgy Pope. <laughs> Crusader Saracen says, little A10 Chan says, brrrr. Uh, James B says, hope you have more drunk guests. Always more fun. I agree. <laughs> Next, he says, humans are encased in an RF resistant material called skin. 5G conspiratards accept science if it works for them and deny the rest. Mo money, mo charity. Rhino says, uh, chloroquine is the drug treatment for malaria. 
Hydroxychloroquine is the less potent version. The couple drank chloroquine phosphate. Very deadly. There you go. I didn't know what... I don't, I don't, I'm not a chemist. I hate chemistry. Um, Neither was that guy, apparently. Yeah, nope. Not at all. <laughs> also, if your wife comes up to you with a concoction that's going to cure coronavirus, pause a minute and say, where did you get this? If you're watching CNN and they say something that will cure something that you think you may eventually have at some point, and you're like, oh, wait, I saw that near my fish tank. <laughs> Maybe take a second to realize you're a fucking idiot. Or if you hear it on if you hear it on CNN and then your wife shows up with the drink within hours. Uh go, uh, honey, sweetheart, baby, where'd you get that? From I the fish she's tank. A, she survived no. though. She survived. She lived, yeah. Yeah. Do you think she she maybe she gave Murder herself charges? a half half dose? Murder? Is this the next episode of Sword and Scale? I don't know. That's pretty uh, that's fucked. Yeah, it's messed up. Bad Dragonite says, have you heard of Murder Mystery Box? It's like Loot Box, but with fake quarterly murderly murder cases that you can solve. I heard about it from some YouTuber that got sponsored by them. I think it was John Solo. Nope, never heard of him. You heard of that? No, I think we're... These are a lot of super chats, man. How much How much are we up to? Do, do I have to, like, uh, pony up my car? What's yes. Going on? No, we're, we're over a thousand... <laughs> See, I have two avenues. I have the super chat and justice chat. We're over a thousand oh, okay. super chats. We're about another. Uh, we're, but I believe we're under eleven hundred, and then we're at about another uh, hundred to two hundred in justice chats. Are we doing so, both? Are we combined? I I thought that was that was only prudent, uh, that we combine all of the combined revenue of the show. Yeah. I'm down, dude. Okay, so Bad Dragonite says, was Sword and Scale modeled after Steven Crowder's Mug Club? Or Sword and Scale Plus modeled after Steven Crowder's Mug Club. Also, what's your favorite Chaos God? Uh, answer to the first question. Was it modeled what's after... A what's a Chaos God? That's from Warhammer 40K. Oh. I'm a huge nerd. Okay. Uh, but was it modeled after Mug Club? My, sh my thing? No, no, no. Uh, actually, I think Mug Club came after what we started to develop in plus. Um, but I'm a big fan of, of Crowder too. I think Crowder's uh, really, he's a funny dude. I like him. He's fucking hilarious. I love, I love his show. He's he, he I watch it a lot. I, I subscribe. Uh, I have a bunch of uh, other, other guys I subscribe to and uh, you know, everybody's just trying to do what they can. I think the, when this, the, when this all started, um, mm -hmm. anyone that was even slightly conservative started to shit themselves because oh, of course. yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, Tim Cast, you know, <laughs> like, um, uh, there's there's a whole lot, a whole list of people that are that are trying to figure out how to make money without having YouTube censor them. And I wasn't aware of the whole YouTube world before I got into this when. I didn't even know who Sargon of Akkad the fuck was a year ago. <laughs> I had no fucking idea. I never right. had any idea. But once Patreon banned him, I was like, who's this guy? And then I started going, oh, that's not right. Wait, yeah. what's going on here? And then I started looking into it, and then I started getting really pissed. So um, that's, what you, that's what you get, you motherfucking pieces of shit fucking assholes remind okay, me right. to remind me to tell you sometime about the problem with with patreon and uh indiegogo and and kickstarter actually canceling people and projects because they've got they've got a dark secret and it's called binding arbitration clauses um that will absolutely ruin them if anybody of scale uh gets gets uh canceled and they take it are, the right way. Are you are you insinuating that there may be some sort of um, class lawsuit here? Something? So here's here's the weird thing. Uh, so action. California passed a law not too long ago, and all yeah. of these guys chose California as their choice of law provision, and they all demanded binding arbitration from their creators. Right. So you you go on Patreon and you say we agree to sue Patreon in San Francisco under the uh, the binding arbitration of Jams or whatever. All right. Or maybe yeah. it's triple A. I don't remember which one they do. Well, here's the problem. Uh, to do that, 
they agree that you, if you sue them, will pay $250 and they will pay the arbitration costs, the rest of them. Um, California passed a law not too long ago that says that they have to pay those arbitration costs within 30 days. Now, if you, Mike, get canceled by Patreon and you sue them, okay, you pay your 250 bucks, they pay like three grand, right? And then you go to your arbitration, you have it out. If all of your fans sue them for tortious interference because they had a contract with you to provide content through the Patreon platform, suddenly 100 fans pay $250. Patreon pays $300,000. And you get 1,000 fans to sue them. 1,000 fans pay $250. Patreon pays $3 million. Patreon can't afford that. It's crazy how scary it is. Patreon probably can't afford the 300K, to be honest. Uh, and that's just, mm-hmm. that's just the filing fees. And they've tried to write stuff in where like, they prevent class actions, but the class action determination of, a, of an arbitration happens after you file the arbitration. So they still would have to pay that initial amount. Hey, hey Nick. Yeah. Uh, just, a, just a stupid question. Um, sure. Where the fuck were you like a year ago? <laughs> Sorry. This was this is being done. This is actually being okay. done and developed right now by a guy um who got canceled off of uh, Indiegogo and then another person got canceled off of Patreon and they've taken the same approach and they're kicking their asses in arbitration, but because it's arbitration, it's not public. So you can't talk about the details. But right now, none of these little companies that fund a lot of big people know what to do because most of the money goes out the window right like uh they're taking their five percent cut plus a three percent for the for the credit card fees and 92 percent is going to the creator um they don't they don't have the funds to deal with this sorry i wasn't wasn't there when you got canceled but yeah it's yeah. uh they're they're about to have a reckoning they cancel the wrong person and they will go out of business immediately and that's why I think they've tried to settle back. I think when yeah. when this all started to happen and, and they started to go after me, the same basic bitches that went after uh, Wondery and, and, and with four or five Twitter accounts got them to drop me, uh, went after Patreon and went after uh, uh, them specifically – against me there was an article written about two days later about how wondery had heard about all of what a horrible fucking human being i am and they decided (laughs) to keep me anyway which means that they went after wondery to try to get me banned yeah and wondery just said "Eh, i'm sorry not wondery i'm uh patreon they they try to go after Patreon to get me banned, and Patreon just get went like, eh, n- nah, we're just we're just gonna keep. But that was enough for me to be like, uh, yeah, I don't trust f- any of these fucking people. Yeah, I don't trust Wondery. I don't trust a- anyone because they and did you I'm, they did you right that time, but they'll do you dirty the next time. Oh, absolutely. They're just waiting for the moment to just go. Okay, we're yep. gonna go ahead and. And that's yeah no fuck that, fuck that. So so it's uh it's an interesting thing. Um just just know that there are people fighting the fight, and uh, we will eventually tamp down this bullshit. But um, bad dragonite says we all have to help each other in times like this. You ducking left wing commie. Oh damn. Nah, I'm joking. Great stream. Hope to see more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm watching videos. It's very much like the idea of helping people affected by COVID-19. I'm unable to get any whiskey, so my whiskey money will go to the stuff like this. Love you guys. Peace. Hey, thanks, buddy. Bad Dragonite says, have you seen bro science? Funny-ass quarantine survival videos. One was pros and cons of coronavirus. I have not. And finally, this is the last chat. Or wait, there's two left. Bad Dragonite says, I'm with Nick on this. If the government tries to take away my rights by force, then I hope they go join the Flutang clan. And the last chat of the evening is from Phoenix Lord Asterman says, was going to buy some new Dire Avengers with this, 
but I think it would be more valuable going to you and the fight against Nurgle and Corona Chan. Nice. Well, thank you. Appreciate well, that. Well, Mike, thank you so much, man. It's been a four-hour stream. That was four hours for real? Yeah, four hours for real. We're at three hours, 58 minutes, and 22 seconds right now. Fucking love it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Hey, um, let me know what the charity is, uh, and I'll I'll donate uh, whatever the number is, and we'll you could tweet that out. and We'll post uh, the receipts. We'll, yeah, we'll post receipts, because uh, I know these motherfuckers want our shoes. And... <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? Like, no, it's it, this is fantastic. I really appreciate you having me on. And I and and again, I really appreciate you having me back on after me being such a little bitch <laughs> uh, a year ago. So thank you. Man, uh don't don't beat yourself up too much. You're going through a lot of bullshit. Uh and and it I was able to recover the show, no problem. And uh, and I'm glad you you reached out again because I was like, damn, I, I guess I'll never have him on the show. Uh, but you reached out and said, hey, have me on. And we've got a great we had a great time tonight. So thank you very much for that. This was awesome. I'd love to come on anytime you want me. I love it. Yeah, so, man. Thank you so much. We'll do it again. We'll do it again. Don't leave yet, though. We're going to say goodbye okay. to the stream and I'll say yeah. goodbye to you uh, in private. So. All okay. right, guys. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Check out the Sword and Scale podcast. Consider subscribing to Sword and Scale Plus. They have all different tiers from five bucks up to a hundred bucks a month. Uh, get all your murder fantasy content. Not, no, I'm just kidding. Get all of your real murder <laughs> content that you want. Uh, listen to Mike. Um, get all sorts of bonus content that's available. Check it out. Check out their merch store. Uh, anything you want to say, Mike, before you go? Thanks to the chat. Thanks to everybody that said excellent guest. I appreciate you guys very much. I, I very, very uh, excited to be on the stream. Um, looking forward to it after being such a, a bitch a year ago. <laughs> but uh, but thank you for the warm welcome, and I love it. And uh, what a wonderful talk. I think we we just this was really really cool. We just talked about a lot of stuff, and even though we don't agree on stuff. It's a very interesting conversation and a, and a back and forth about really important things that I think everybody's thinking about, right? If we so. agreed on all the important shit, we'd have all the answers to really complex problems, and we don't. You yeah, know? no, it, no. It's, so it's it's fantastic. I like. I, I really enjoy this uh, this kind of thing. Me too, buddy. All right. Well, let's uh, let's say peace out to the chat. Hope you guys have a good night. Again, check out Sword and Scale, and uh, thank you for hanging out with us tonight. Have a good night. Uh, I will not be on Twitch tonight because it's already late and I've been drinking too much and I need to go to bed. But uh, there will be Twitch tomorrow. So I uh, hope you guys have a good night. Peace. Peace. Peace.